Sunday fun day. Cumbertron first in the chat. Cumbertron playing the tunes. Oh yeah, today is gonna be a wild one, everyone. We got two amazing guests, Ravi Abbott and Pixels at Dawn Gaming from Amiga Addict Magazine. We're talking about the magazine. They got some exciting announcements to make about the magazine, and it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Today is also the 30th birthday, like to the day, February 14th, 1991, that Lemmings came out. So we'll play some Lemmings, and I got this amazing demo of a new Amiga game that's untitled, that's coming out from Nesso Games. Huge thanks to Neil from Indie Retro News for hooking me up with this demo. So it's gonna be a wild one, folks. Comatron's there, Oram, my man, Vector Funk, thank you so much for that link, Vector Funk, you're awesome. Jost80, Texas Foodballer, Alanson09 with the chinchilla, Stuart Johnson610 with the awesome case, I love it. Gabora, what is up? Um, Fisher Manalus, how's it going? Tiger Skunk, Air Yuri in the hot tub, in the chat. X Barry PL Chesh X Barry, I've got some Tisky beer in the fridge cooking up, man. I'm gonna drink it later. Gabora, boom, what is up, Nagram? How's it going? Hot tub time, Air Yuri, my man. Jan 909, good morning to you, Jan. It's great to see you. Pixels at Dawn Gaming in the chat, gonna be on the stream, my man. Commodore 128, greetings. Wow, greetings to Croatia. That's amazing. Greetings from New York to Croatia. Knee high spy, checking in from the U.S. of A. My man, knee high. Hope all is well, buddy. I love your, I love those, those videos you make when you put your face in, on the, on the characters. That's amazing, dude. Robocop dad, how's it going? Corvo, great to see you. Yo yo, K Indiana. Amiga Cami checking in from the future. Retro, Robbie DJ in the chat on the stream. It's gonna be amazing. 17-bit retro, how's it going? Fisher, how's it going? Fisher Manalus. Mickey Geezer 75. I got the manual. I'm gonna show it off. Greg of Florida checking in. My man Greg, hope all's well with you and Anthony down there. K Indiana. Oh no, more lemmings. Amiga Cami checking in from Tasmania. That's incredible, Amiga Cami. Oh man, Spinto77, yo, 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 yo. My mom and my dad, happy Valentine's Day, mom and dad. Being being that today is the birthday of lemmings, I figured I'd start out, I'd start out with an interesting one. It's a classic from Eric Schwartz. It's the anti-lemon demo. Anti-lemon. That's right. Anti-lemon demo. Amiga. Come on, lads. There's the signal. Let's go. classic from Eric Schwartz but you know I like to start my streams off a little music I know what to get everyone pumped up so here's another here's a here's a real demo that was an amazing animation by Eric Schwartz but let's kick it off with Lumengia by Looney's first place breakpoint 2009 in the Amiga 4k intro four kilobytes let's freaking go <laughs>
Oh yeah, we on it's Sunday fun day. What is up everyone? A big happy Valentine's Day. Of course, it's Valentine's Day, so you know what I love to do. Check one. Check one. Amiga love. Dot com, my man. I put the where is it? I put the Amiga love dot com down there in honor of Valentine's Day. I mean, what better day to celebrate the Amiga love dot com than Valentine's Day, right? <laughs> my man, Amiga love, love that guy. Uh, yo, Texas, let me, I'm gonna pop myself down here, I'm going crazy. Texas Foosballer, thank you so much for subscription, Texas Foosballer. Appreciate that. Texas Foosballer is getting the Amiga Bill goodie bag every week. I send out a goodie bag loaded with stuff. This goodie bag will have the, the anti-lemon demo from Eric Schwartz on it in both a video format and the actual one that you can play on your real Amiga. I'm gonna put the, uh, the, the, the demo from Looney's on it too. I love that. It's, I mean, four kilobytes, that's amazing, right? And the tune is so good. So you guys will get that. You get all the links I'm going to talk about uh, in the stream. I'm not going to do a ton of Amiga news today. We've got a lot to do. Um, yo, um, Lolo Tobodo, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. Welcome to the stream. If you're new to my streams, uh, welcome. I'm Bill. I stream here every Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. UTC, 8 p.m. Central European time, or like 6 a.m. in the future where Amiga Kami is from. <laughs> 6 a.m. Monday morning, she gets up. Dude, that, that's amazing. That is amazing. So welcome to the stream, everyone. Like I said, um, I, didn't I didn't realize it last week, but today is the 30th anniversary of Lemmings. Like, literally, Lemmings came out February 14th, 1991. So we have to play Little Lemmings. And it's also, um, there's a big article about Lemmings in the latest issue of Amiga Addicts Magazine. Speaking of Amiga Addicts Magazine, Amiga Addicts will be the, the main focus of today's stream. I'm super, super lucky to have two very incredible guests on, Robbie Abbott and Pixels at Dawn Gaming, two editors of Amiga Addict Magazine. We're going to talk to them about the magazine, and they have a couple of really um, exciting announcements to make as well, which is super, super cool. And Locust, Locust, good evening to you. Thank you so much for the subscription, Locust. I appreciate that very, very much, Locust. Uh, and then uh, Neil over at Indie Retro News also got me this really cool demo of an untitled Amiga game coming uh, from Nesso Games. It uses Erox Scorpion Engine, so we'll check that out too. Again, today I have another hard out as well because uh, my wife is selling chocolates again. I mean, it's, it's Valentine's Day, right? So she's selling chocolates and I have to break her exhibit down with her. So I got a hard out at 5.30 p.m. So we're going to talk to the guys from Amiga Act Magazine, check out the demo, and we're going to play some Lemmings. That's probably all we're going to get to do today. I do have like a ton of Amiga news as well, but I guess I'll have to save it for next week. We'll see what we get to. We'll see what we can get to today. Yeah, that was Eric Schwartz working. Let me just say hi to everyone. Uh, Smash1980, how's it going? Raveman, Phase 101, Gabora, um, yo. Palinurk checking in from Club Amiga Bill VIP Lounge, my man. Great to have you here. Happy birthday, Lemmings is right. Uh, Stuart Johnson was amazing, right? Bobby Zeal, what is up? <laughs> um, yeah, Amiga 4K is out of this world, Comatron. 30 years old, Vector Funk. 30 years old today. What's up, Bobby Zeal? Great to see you. Uh, Wonder Boy, what's up, Wonder Boy? Great to see you. Tiger Skunk, how's it going? Uh, yeah, 48K RAM, my man. Great to see you. Uh, 40, 4K, crazy, right? It might be the best 4K demo of our time. Yeah, oh yeah, I remember. Nice. Knee High Spy remembers picking up a copy of Lemmings when it was released when he was in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, for tech training back in 1991. Wow, it's crazy, right? Come on, come on, music, music. What's going on, music? This is this 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 ain't cool. I need. Don't quit on me here, hippo player. There we go. Enigma, one of the classic Amiga demos. Um, Roscoe 500. Any recommendations for demos to run a 500 ECS 512K? Well, yeah. So like the ECS Amigas, like the Amiga 500 Plus, came with one mega chip, so you're good to go. I say um, Eon by the Black Lotus, Every Way by Hoffman. And way too rude by by um, Logicoma. Those are the three I'll give you right there. If you want, you can join my Discord channel. I'll have to send you some recommendations. Uh, let's see when we catch up on everything here. Z-Man, good morning to you, Z-Man. Z-Man might be checking in from Australia too. Uh, says good morning. Acmafin, what is up, Acmafin? Great to see you. I'm just catching up on all the chat here. Thank you. Yo, Pitacon, how's it going? Pitacon, great to see you. Tiger, Tiger Skunk. Um, Maya82, checking in from Club Amiga Bill VIP Lounge. Yo, Luba3D, thank you so much for the host. Luba, I saw you going live before, and I apologize. I wanted to stop into your stream and, you know, definitely uh, resub and do all that good stuff. Um, unfortunately, I was just so slammed getting ready for this stream. I couldn't, I couldn't make it, but I'll circle back with you when I'm offline. Luba, it's great to see you. Um, definitely go check out Luba's stream. She's an awesome streamer, and man, 
she can use some support right now and, and it's worth it man it's worth she's an amazing streamer a uh, really cool person and she's really good at pac-man and amazing amazing cosplayer she's got great design great style and her streams always put me in a good mood her community reminds me of all of you because uh, you all are amazing and her community is amazing that's the great thing about twitch is like hanging out with such cool people like that F Sandstrom, how's it going? Um, great to see you, F Sandstrom. Iraq, Iraq, we're gonna check out the Iraq is creator of the Scorpion engine. We're gonna check out a demo of a new game that was made with this engine today. It's an untitled game from Nesso Games. Step Lemon Amiga checking in from Club Amiga Bill VIP Lounge. Locust, thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate the resub, Locust. Great to see you. Milo loves chocolate. Yo, Milo loves chocolate. Uh, we were drinking, we cracked open the wine last night for Valentine's Day. Thank you for that gift. That was that was amazing. Uh, thank you very much for that gift. You're amazing, Milo. Thank you. Mr. Toast, how's it going? Um, Jiro, what is up? Happy, Of course I remember Happy Days. You want to make a reboot called Happy Sundays with Bill as Fonzie. That's hilarious. <laughs> with uh, an Amiga and vinyl. That's hilarious, Jiro. Great to see you, Jiro. We're going to play. I think Nesto Games is from Italy, so we're going to check out uh, a game. Milo, it's great to see you. Thank you for that wine. It was amazing. Um, let's see if uh, Luba Luba throwing down the Amiga love on Valentine's Day thank you so much Luba and thank you so much for that host I really appreciate it it's going really good Luba it's going really good Th things are a little bit busy and crazy for me uh, but that's a good thing it's a good thing um Ace of P design how's it going great to see you you're welcome Luba you're welcome I hope all is well Luba you're yeah our communities do rock I agree I agree so guys, I'm a, so let's see what time what time we got here. I'm gonna have uh, two guests on very soon, Robbie Abbott and Pixels at Dawn Gaming. I just speaking of communities, right? We're talking about communities and how amazing our communities are. The media community is so so incredible. Lubus community is incredible. I got some really amazing gifts uh, during the week. Two two really cool gifts. I'll start out with this one. Um, I got the instruction manual to the Ry to Rygar, the Amiga version of Rygar. This is the um, uh, this is this is Mick Geezer's port, you know, of Rygar. That one of my my favorite new games to come out for for Amiga. And this manual is just absolutely gorgeous. So this is gonna like complete the box set for me. I got the gorgeous box. I've got the amazing floppy disk, and now I've got the manual. So, yo, seriously, uh, my man Mick Geezer, thank you so much for this gift. It is it's incredible. I I love it, and it's so cool. It's got all the level codes on it, so you can skip to the levels. Cause you know I'll never make it to round 30 on my own. I don't think so. <laughs> so this this thing is just gorgeous. Can I? Go overhead cam full screen. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Look how cool it is. So this is gonna look sweet in the, in the box. It's gonna be awesome. It, game story. Uh, it's got really beautiful artwork in it. Freaking Kevin Saunders. Retro 32 UK. What is up? Oh yeah, Retro 32 UK. Checking in from the United Kingdom, where where Amiga Addict Magazine is based out of. So that's gonna be it's gonna be a good one for you. Great to see you, Retro 32 UK. I love the picture you posted uh, last week. Hitch, my man Hitch on Twitch. You want me to smell it? Oh yeah, I'm gonna smell it, Hitch. Hitch on Twitch. Everyone go give Hitch a follow. He's a great guy. Freaking professional radio host. Like Hitch, Hitch is the man. I, I freaking love that guy. Smell, you, yeah, Hitch, you're right, you gotta smell it. Let me smell it. Oh yeah. Oh, Hitch, it's good. Oh yeah. Yes. Hitch, yes, yes, Hitch. That was a great suggestion. I'm getting nice and nice and <laughs> lubed up for the stream. I love it. Fred Seda Lemon Amiga, how's it going? You want a manual too, Fred Seda? I'll put in a good word with the McGeezer for you. Um, <laughs> the Rygar manual is, is amazing, Texas Foosballer. It's, it's really cool. There he is, McGeezer. McGeezer75 is in the chat. McGeezer, thank you so much for that gift. That was super, super cool. Um, Roscoe 500, great to see you. Torque Live, what is up, Torque Live? Great to see you. Oh, come on over here. Okay, 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 okay. It's not old and stinky. It's fresh. It's fresh and clean. Oh, I forgot to put my bracelet on. Now, now I can stream. All right, one more gift, and then we'll have the the the, uh, the guests on. I'm sorry if I missed anyone uh, in chat, but <laughs> you would react the same way with the Music X manual. That's hilarious, Milo. Um, What's up, uh, AHCJB? Super Tech Boy, how's it going, Super Tech Boy? Um, I got this incredible gift from Carlos uh, Roldan. 
and he made he made a handmade mug for me. It's really incredible. It's got the Guru Meditation Org banner on it. It's got the picture of me and Anthony on it. It's got an Amiga logo on it, um, and it's got the Survivor. I'm pretty sure that's an Eric Schwartz um, graphic right there. That is freaking cool. Uh, I'll show you on the overhead cam. Um, I mean, how how nice is this? I, this is what a really nice gift, Carlos. I don't know uh, if you're watching, but if you are, I I appreciate this gift so very much. It is incredible. I can't wait to. Uh, I'm gonna be drinking coffee out of this one. I'm a big coffee guy. I love coffee in the morning, and you know this is such a nice gift. I think Carlos. Some people saw the mug and they want to buy one, so Carlos is like selling it to them, and then he's like. He's like, I, this is like a non-sanctioned by you with the Guru Meditation, so I feel weird selling it. I'm like, D just make a donation to a charity. And he's like, all right, cool. <laughs> so thank you so much, Carlos. What a, what a really beautiful gift. I really, really appreciate it. You love the setup? Thank you, uh, uh, AHX. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I, uh, I worked hard on this one. Wait, and you'll see, you'll see, I, I made some new, I made some new uh, profiles right before the stream for, for Ravi and Pixels. So I'm going to have them on in a second. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Ash said hi. What is up, Ash? Ash, congratulations on your stream. Ash, Ash, I wish I knew you were doing a charity stream. I would have helped promote it a little bit, but Ash did a charity stream, and she raised, like, thousands of dollars, Ash. You're amazing. Great job on that, Ash. Um, everyone, go give Ash said hi a follow. She's an amazing uh, young lady who is also a great streamer and massive positive vibes on Ash's streams. And we got to get her streaming some Amiga soon, too. Oh, yeah, and Luba, I owe you, I owe you some Amiga stuff as well. I haven't forgot about that. I can make I can do it the easy way or the difficult way. Maybe I'll just do it the easy way. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want to um, I just want to read this out. This is from Carlos who sent me the mug. Um, he said, "Enclosed is a custom-made gift I wanted to give you, as I really enjoy your YouTube channel as well as the streams that you do. I'm an avid Amiga fan, and I currently own an Amiga 2000 with Apollo Vampire V500 version 2 plus, as well as several other upgrades. I also own a Vampire V Fall standalone." I currently run a BBS on my PC that has an area for Amiga. It's called necrobbs.ddns.net on port 23. I hope you enjoy your mug. Take care, my friend, and keep up the good work. Carlos, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna let's put the name I'm gonna put the name to um his his BBS in the chat. It's um let's see, N E C R L Go check out Carlos's. I gotta check it out because you know we did we we uh, we dialed into Tech Girls uh, Amiga Underground's uh, BBS and that was a lot of fun. So now I got a new one to, to dial into. I'm super psyched. Yo, Hitch, with the resub, Hitch. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate that very very much, Hitch. Thank you so much for the support. Hitch is gonna be getting that Amiga Bill goodie bag every week, and Hitch is also a great streamer here on, on Twitch. Uh, we do a lot of fun Amiga Live stuff together. Hitch, like we gotta do another Amiga Live session. Like stream it soon, Hitch. Everyone go give Hitch a follow. He's a great guy and super, super talented streamer. Streams all kinds of stuff, including Amiga. Hitch is the man. What's up, Tiger Skunk? Ilhas, how's it going? Hitch on Twitch will not stream from a Switch. You know it. <laughs> you know it. You know it. Um, all right, what else? What else I got going on here? What time is it? I told the guys that have him on at. I got, we got five minutes. I know I have something else to do. Okay, cool. Um, so if you're just joining the stream, welcome. Uh, today we're going to do an interview with Ravi Abbott and Pixels at Dawn Gaming from Amiga Addict Magazine. We're going to play Lemmings because it's literally 30 years old today. It's an unbelievable. And we're going to check out this awesome demo from Nesso Games using Iraq Scorpion Engine. And I got to finish up by 5.30 p.m. So it's going to be a little shorter stream than usual, but not too short. Not too short. We'll still have, we'll still have enough hours. <laughs> so yeah, as 30 years ago today it came out. You know what I'll do? Uh, we got I got three minutes left. Um, I just want to thank all, like, all my patrons. I got a couple new patrons this month. I want to give them a big shout out. So Node Pond, thank you so much for your support. Uh, George F. Rosansky, thank you for the, the new patron uh, patronage. I don't know how else to call it. John McDermott. Matthew Mobes and Jiro, you guys are my, my latest my latest uh, ones that joined in February. Thank you all so much for your support. I think you know I know I know Maya got a new VIP card. Let's just take it to Club Amiga Bill and then we'll introduce our very very special guests.
Amorido? Entonces, vamos a la fiesta del Club Amiga Bill. Oh, you know the party never stops at Club Amiga Bill, Sepp Lemon Amiga. Auf geht's zur Party im Club Amiga Bill. Show your Amiga Bill VIP card to Brother Bill at the door, Maya82. Welcome to Club Amiga Bill. Step right up and have your IDs ready. Amiga Swiss. Palace V. Snow Dog. Tech Girl. Maya 82. Sanzian 01. Dark Horse Observatory. Milo Loves Chocolate. MonsterJoysticks.com. C64 Television. O ROM. RetroBench.com. Seth Lemon Amiga. And S.R. Baker. Oh, you know Oh yeah, I am ready. Thank you all so much for your incredible support. I really, really appreciate all my patrons very, very much. I don't know why, dude, I don't know why the credit roll stutters like that. I gotta figure it out, OBS. But hey, we'll give you more time to, to read it. Thank you all so much for your support. I wanna like really push the Patreon a little bit more here in 2021. You know, I, I hope, I'm trying to give you all like really good value for your money. Um, and you know, it could become like a little thing. It could become a little thing. I appreciate you all so much. Step, you, I appreciate you, Step. Thank you so much. Um, Dancing Wolf, no, I did my, Smash 1980, Dancing Wolf has done some amazing animations for me, including the beginning of Amiga News. Um, but all those animations I did, I did them all on uh, Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. <laughs> uh, so thank you all so much for your incredible support and welcome new patrons. And uh, I'm about to welcome some other folks right now. Man, man, that credit roll, OBS, I gotta figure this one out, man. I gotta figure that one out. Jiro, do you want, do you, Jiro is wizard. Jiro is wizard. Jiro, do you want me to keep the wizard in the, in the credits or, or do you like it the way it is? Or do you want Jiro? <laughs> it's up to you. Thank you all so much for your support. So, um, speaking of like amazing Amiga community, I'm so I'm so, <laughs> I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. The community, you know, is is in my opinion, is the most important part of of Amiga. The Amiga computer itself is great, but it's all about the community. And there's a brand new magazine that's come out for the Amiga community, and it's called Amiga Addict Magazine. And I am very, very lucky to have two of the editors of Amiga Attic Magazine with me today. I've got Ravi, Ravi Abbott, who's no stranger to the Amiga scene. Ravi is co-host of the Retro Hour podcast, like one of the top podcasts in the world, like let alone Retro, one of the top podcasts in the world. He also does live DJ mixes. He's called The Formula. Um, I, he also has a YouTube channel. Like, he's one of the first people I ever follow on YouTube, so I'm super excited to talk to Ravi. I've been lucky enough to be a guest on his podcast before. And Pixels at Dawn Gaming, who I've met. Uh, I met him through the Amigos podcast, another great podcast. Love the Amigos. I met Pixels through the Amigos podcast. He also hangs out on uh, Hitch on Twitch. Let me just get the, my cameras calibrated here. Let me get the calibrated. Let's see if I can do this. I click here. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, cool. Nice and quiet. Nice and quiet. I'm going to unmute their mic. I'm gonna unmute their mic and uh, let's let's see uh, let's see if this works. Let's. <laughs> oh, so it worked! It worked. I think I think they're unmuted. Welcome, Ravi and Pixels at Dawn Gaming. How are you guys? Pretty good. Pretty good. How are you, Bill? I'm fantastic. You know what I want to do? I, I, as much as I'm loving my new uh, my emulated Amiga 1200 here. Uh, well, actually, it's an emulated Amiga 400 4000 in a 1200 case. I'm gonna disconnect it and see. I got magnets in that in that bracelet. I'm gonna remove this and repopulate the desk with these beauties right here. I just got my second copy, my sec the second oh my issue God. of Amiga Addict magazine, and I'm stoked, man. And very appropriate that it's got lemmings on the cover because today, as you mentioned to me, Pixels, I didn't even realize it. Today is the 30th anniversary of lemmings, so I'm super psyched. But anyway, Ravi Abbott and Pixels at Dawn Gaming, welcome to the stream. It is is a pleasure and honor to have you here. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you very much. Oh, cheers. It's, it's good to see you got your um, other copy, Bill. I know you were waiting for the first one for quite a while. Yeah, the first one. It's, the first one came about two weeks ago, which was which was mental. The uh, the postal service here in the in the USA has been pretty pretty heinous. It's been very uh, very difficult. But then the second one came. Um, it came this week, so that's pretty pretty cool. So hopefully now moving forward they'll come uh, more on time. But uh, it's yeah, it's so great to have you guys on the stream. Um, 
This is Robbie Abbott and Pixels, uh, Pixels at Dawn Gaming. They are two editors of Amiga Act Magazine, a brand new Amiga magazine that just came out. January 2021 was the first issue, uh, which is right here on the left. Um, and I gave you guys a brief intro, but why don't you guys uh, introduce yourself, starting with uh, Ravi first. Let him know. If, if you don't know who Ravi is, now now's your chance to let him know, Rav. Yeah, so I do a retro gaming podcast called The Retro Hour, and uh, we do a lot of interviews in there, and I'm also deputy editor on Amiga Addict. So Jonah Naylor is actually our main editor, and he kind of got us involved. He came up with the idea and concept, and I lend a hand doing um, the features on there and uh, also trying to pick some of the content and uh, w working out what we're going to do. And uh, I also do a bit of DJing on Amigas as well, which is always fun. Your your DJ streams are incredible. I love it. You hook uh, tw uh, do you hook up by twelve hundreds or six hundreds or both? I think you have two twelve hundreds. Uh, I right? do twelve hundreds. Yeah, twelve hundreds. I, I think you can do six hundreds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you um, can. That's so cool. I, I love your streams. They're so much fun. Um, and of course, Retro Hour is an incredible podcast. And you're a fantastic interviewer, by the way. And your oh, skills. Thanks. Yeah, I really appreciate your skills. And you're obviously it makes sense that you're involved in you know, getting articles for the magazine because I believe that you're one of the main ones who gets all the talent for the Retro Hour podcast and you guys score some amazing yeah. talent on that podcast. So yeah, kudos to you, man. Great, great job. <laughs> and I think Dan, Dan will be involved with the magazine at some point as well. We'll get, we're, we're going to get him to write something, <laughs> get him on board. Excellent. Yeah. That'll be a huge benefit. Dan, Dan's an incredible guy. Um, Pixels at Dawn Gaming. I met you through the Amigos, another one of my favorite podcasts. They're great, great guys. And also, played. I think I played some Amiga Live with you on, either it was on my stream, I think it was on both on my stream and Hitch's uh, stream. Uh, welcome yeah, to the podcast. Ian, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I, so, uh, I'm a streamer myself. Um, I, I stream on my, mostly retro stuff and eventually Amiga stuff when I eventually build my new PC, which I've been saying for about a year. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I do that. Uh, I, as you said, I do a lot of stuff with uh, the Amigos podcast. I uh, uh, run the committee that picks all the games for the for each episode um, and uh, and various other things over there. Uh, and I'm also a co-host on the Hitching Post podcast, uh, as if I didn't already have enough. To <laughs> so uh, so yeah, lots lots and lots of stuff for me to be involved in. Uh, that's brilliant. I didn't realize you were a co-host of the Hitching Podcast. That's great. <laughs> Congrats. That's awesome. Uh, with so many great people in this in this incredible Amiga community and in this uh, retro community, uh, it's really it's really incredible. I mean, so guys, all right, it's 2021. What the heck ever inspired you to make a new Amiga magazine in 2020? Like, what is like what what time warp are we in? Like, what is happening right now? It's just crazy. <laughs> So we, we we ask ourselves that sometimes. As well. <laughs> what possessed <laughs> us to do this? But uh, um, it's it's all down to so so our editor um, uh, Jonah Naylor. He uh, it's his brainchild, it's his uh, his idea. Um, it was something that he wanted to do a couple of years ago. So some of you may know him as Simulant. He runs a, a Amiga shop in the UK, um, and uh, he he had the the bright idea to to make it a new print magazine. Um, and he had a good chat with uh, Ravi about it, and uh, he uh, and two years later, <laughs> just in time <laughs> for 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 some of the biggest upheaval in, in the country and in, in the in the uh, mailing service and stuff that we've ever seen, um, it, we we finally got around to a student magazine. I mean, I I um, I got involved in uh, about to the end of October uh, last year. Um, so I'd I'd, I'd been chatted to Jonah before about his uh, his new keyboards project that he was doing and and things like that. Um, but he popped up and said, "Do you want to write something for the magazine?" So I said yes, and uh, intending to write the odd article for the magazine. And, and now I'm a lot more involved than I <laughs> ever intended to be. So, uh, but it works out alright. But yeah, it's it, it was mostly through the conversation between Jonah and and, and Ravi. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you got any more to. Uh, well, I mean, the, that, the, the thing that really um, impresses me, but because you don't just come up with the idea, let's make a new Amiga magazine. There, you must, or, and Jonah must have sensed like a need for it. So, um, like if he felt that there was there wasn't a need for this magazine and people didn't want it, there wasn't a place for it, he would never have like moved forward with it. So, like, what was it about the community that you know, Pixels and Ravi, that really you know? felt like you guys felt that it's a viable product here in 2021 well we were when i when we've done the podcast we've kind of aimed for more more retro than just amiga and uh you know jonah was like oh maybe we could do an amiga magazine that's got a bit more of a wider appeal like amiga 
future is really good. Uh, big fans of the magazine. I've got about like nearly all of them up here. But um, basically, the translation from German didn't flow that well, and we felt that like that UK identity of kind of magazines were actually a lot bigger than the Amiga magazines themselves and the Amiga scene. They were huge, like back in the days, and uh, we thought that kind of thing was missing. And and you know, Jonah, Jonah actually convinced me i was like nah don't don't start a magazine <laughs> it would just um be really hard to kind of get people on board and stuff but then we looked at it and we looked at the numbers and stuff and uh, the reaction we've had so far has been absolutely mental and also it was like i went around to all these amiga events uh, about a year before so i went to seven different events loads of different countries and they were all really busy like before COVID, you know, Amiga Germany had like nearly a thousand people, uh, maybe even hitting 2000. And uh, it was just crazy to see that momentum. So wh why not continue that and uh, put it in, in paper as well? Also, people kind of read on the internet. And when you're looking on the internet, you tend to like skim through articles or sometimes the headline is just clickbait or, or misleading. And you're looking for something and you can't really find it. Whereas a magazine's like something really nice to pick up and just get into an article and, and read properly in there. I appreciate that. Some people say that, that they, uh, um, they read the magazine cover to cover kind of thing, which is what you used to do back in the day. You'd go, I don't know anything about um, Lightwave or whatever, but I'll, mm. I'll read this bit anyway, because it's in the magazine I bought. Um, and I think I think we're finding that it, you get a lot more engagement with a print magazine than you do with with just an article on the internet. I think. And we were missing that as well, so we wanted yeah, to read true. through it ourselves. <laughs> yeah. There's something you know really special about a print magazine, and you know for for example, when the first issue came out, I I got the I had the PDF, but I didn't I didn't want to read it until I got the actual physical copy of the magazine because there's something special about sitting there and flipping through it. My my brain just processes it different. Like, I mean, all of us in the retro community, like most of us are probably collectors, so like we like things, we like physical things, <laughs> and consuming physical media is such is becoming more and more rare every day. Like everything is digital now, uh, so I like that's I think that's also why there's like a throwback to like vinyl and yeah, actual physical media as well. So it's just it's so nice to have um, a great printed magazine the experience of absorbing the information and just sitting in my room with the light on at night like flipping through the magazine is great and like you said uh you read it cover to cover and you find things that instead of like actively searching for something the information is kind of there for you to, to read and consume so that's uh that's really cool and it's funny you mentioned you mentioned you're talking about the immediate community and you saw that they're there's a need for it. Thousands of people at these Amiga shows. But when Jonah originally came to me I gotta be honest I just gotta get it off my shoulder I said the same thing Robbie I was just like are you sure? <laughs> I was like, I was like, do you know? I, how... I was like, this is a bit nuts, but uh, why not go with nuts? <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, do you know how hard it is to make a magazine? Like this is, I mean, this is hard. I mean, I try, I guess hard enough for me to make a YouTube video every, every month. Like that's, that's crazy. But like making a magazine, the amount of work and effort to go into it. I'm like, are you sure you can, you can do this? You're sure you want to do this? So I was like a little bit skeptical at first too. And then like, man, did he blow my socks off? That's why I like, it's okay to have a little bit of doubt, but then if someone like you see a spark in someone and like you, you could feel his passion. I'm like, all right, like let's let's let him roll with it. Let's see what he can do. And oh my god, like he he exceeded all my expectations like by by light years. This magazine is is really phen uh, phenomenal. So I'm so glad that he just and you, he you had know that what dream. topped it. You know what topped it? It was when Jonah said we'll make it all with Amigas as well. And I was like, that's that's even more matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to get to that too as well. I want to get more when I want to flip through the magazine and talk about how it's made. But once we're on that topic now, uh, I believe he uses PageStream to make it, is that correct? Or you guys use PageStream to that's make right, it? Yeah. So is it, is it is it on a four thousand, isn't it? Um uh, uh, that he's he using? just bits of it on four thousand. I think he's got an X five hundred he does some some bit on as well. Because I think I think it's uh once you start putting big images in, it becomes a little bit harder to do it on a on a classic Amiga because it just slows right down. But it takes up all the RAM, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's been crazy. So yeah, the, think... the the magazine is actually made on real Amigas. That's is, is it? The whole thing is made on real Amigas. I guess if he's using the X five thousand, that's that's amazing. Yeah, all all, all the layout and uh, and and um, and these. The setting for it and the page setting for when he sends it off to the publisher is all done on on Amigas. Obviously, the writing of the articles doesn't really matter where you do that. I mean, I could I could sit there and do it on Final Writer, but that might be slightly overkill, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> so I have to copy it off and upload it to somewhere anyway. But uh, 
But um, but yeah, all, all the actual once 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 you get past the copy, everything goes a goes a into page stream and arranged. And it's it's quite nice sometimes when you've just written an article and it's just it's just black text on white paper and you send it to Jonah and he cuts it with this fancy design or it's got like little uh, arrows going in all over the place and uh, and it's like I didn't think of that but that looks really good so there's definitely some artistry that goes into it yeah he's got a bit of a background in graphics design as well so he's done a few kind of magazines in the past and stuff so that's that's really helped that's massive. So well, he wasn't like going into this for the first time. He definitely had a magazine background. His and his design is awesome. I, I love the design of the magazine. It's it's really well designed. We'll flip through it here uh, in in a few in a few minutes. Um, it's 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 just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I, Robbie, one thing I was so I, when I, I opened up the first issue and I started reading uh, your forward and you did an interview uh, with Ben Vost. Uh, he was the former editor of Amiga Format magazine uh, on the Retro Hour, and it. Apparently, Amiga Format Magazine had sold 272,000 copies at one point, and that was like more than GQ and Men's Health, which is stunning. So I guess this also <laughs> played into into your idea to like, oh, there is an Amiga Magazine is definitely viable. <laughs> well, the the magazines outlasted the Amiga for sure. Like when we were at um, going into W. H. Smith and stuff, where we were younger, like Amiga magazines dominated the section of the shelves and. Uh, that continued till like 2001. So they had a, a Amiga Addict, which, uh, no, Amiga Active, we're Amiga Addict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, they had a Amiga Active, which was made of old CU Amiga staff. But um, the level that Amiga format got to, it, it was it was huge, really big. And there must have been people that weren't into the Amiga buying that as well, you know. Yeah, it's incredible. So for me, the, my magazine experience back uh, in the day, it was actually really important because Every month we'd have our Westchester Amiga user group meeting, still do, <laughs> as, as you can read in the article in issue number one. And it used to be held at a computer store called Software Link. It was a Commodore only store. And Bob, the owner, had a really good selection of Amiga magazines. Now here, like we had uh, magazines like Dot .info, we had Amiga World, which was massive here in the States. But the cool thing was he also stocked the European and the UK magazines. And that was, this is pre-internet. So getting those magazines was a way for us to connect with the European Amiga scene. That was like our portal to the Amiga, the Amiga scene happening uh, in, in Europe. And it was so exciting to see the things that were happening over there that weren't happening over here. And I always remember you guys had the awesome like cover discs on the magazines. So that was that was a lot of fun too. <laughs> so yeah, Amiga magazines, super important uh, here in the States as well. It was just a, it was just a really nice um, nice memory for me and a great way to keep in touch uh, with with the Amiga community. Speaking of uh, Amiga magazines, so you guys, there's believe it or not, like we mentioned, there's already like three other Amiga magazines. You got what, Amiga Future, Komodo, and Amiga yeah. out of Poland, and uh, there's another one, Amiga Amiga out of another Amiga one out of Poland, K and A, and then there's another a third one. Um, Ami- so, Amiga user, Amiga user, I think, um, yeah, yeah, which is a Polish a, one. A bit plain in Italy as well. Uh, I know. I'm sure there's a French one as well, but I've completely forgotten which one. And, and Fusion have just announced a quarterly Amiga magazine as well. So uh, yeah. there's, there'll be five, pretty much. <laughs> wow, that's, that's amazing. So what is it about Amiga Addict that is going to be unique and different than these other magazines? Um, I, I think it's the culture. So we're not just covering the hardware and the kind of software and just doing reviews. We're, we're talking about the wider culture. The people behind stuff uh, like you on the front cover you know? <laughs> um, and and we're gonna try and explore you know different things that aren't available on the internet because a lot of the same conversations happen on forums and uh, we're trying to like you know put stuff in a new angle or have a bit of a fresh fresh light on it and uh, you know kind of get people from the past as well that have been really important to the Amiga world and uh, uh, you know there's quite a lot of famous people that uh, love the Amiga and were involved as well so we could talk about them but also get really nerdy so you know we're gonna do specials on D-Paint and uh, you know the video toaster and all that kind of stuff yeah I mean it's it's um I think some of the things I've liked that we've put into the magazine so far have been not just this is this game this is this a piece of hardware this is his application it's it's a this is was my experience back in the day uh it's something very personal to to a someone like this is my experience with you know amiga piracy or or you know um going down to the local um game shop and picking up a game off the shelf and i think those sorts of things um 
make a real difference to to because it's it's the sort of stuff that you don't get anywhere else because it's completely unique to the person that's written it and uh, and we want community contributed articles so like our third issue is nearly half of it is community uh contributor because we want to have every voice like a diversity of opinions um in the amiga world like even if they clash whatever we'll still have them in there and we want to represent like every corner you know uh get everybody involved because we all love the amiga it really feels like a, a magazine like for the community by the community would, would that would that describe it well yeah we I mean, don't want to be in one camp or we don't want to talk about one system we're just everything amiga <laughs> and i think the thing is we, we're quite quite aware we don't know everything <laughs> mm. we'd love to but we don't know everything so we're not going to just sit there and write about something we don't know in a kind of a half-assed fashion we'd rather get somebody who knows a lot about something and get them to write it for us and uh and get the you know get the get the the smes as they say in the business world <laughs> to a uh, subject matter, matter experts to to talk about the thing that they know the best and they love the best because you'll get the best content that way. Yeah, like we haven't done a review of the vampire yet because none of us have it. So uh, the standalone. So we're getting somebody who owns it, a user to talk about the vampire. So that's being written at the moment. And, you know, your experiences of hardware or your kind of your view on it, you know. Excellent, excellent. I have so many more questions to ask you. Some there's some good questions in the chat. I just want to grab them before before they uh, disappear. Mick yeah. Geezer, you know, one, again talking about the media community. I really feel like when I read this magazine, like it really felt like um, I really felt the personal connection to the community, and I feel like it's kind of that's what I try and do with my streams. I try and bring all these amazing people in the community together and uh, talk about like cool projects that they're doing. You know, and and Mick Geezer is like one of the folks who's doing amazing projects on the Amiga with freaking Rygar. I just got the manual. I just got the manual for it uh, this week. It's incredible all those amazing arcade ports and he's saying um would you guys be up for publishing some tutorials like coding tutorials yeah absolutely. oh yeah yeah that's that's yeah. part of it um i think that duncan styles did a really good compact flash one and the amount of people that i've said check out that article because it's really important to know how to format um kind of uh you know compact flash well like I'm a web developer and I learn how to do HTML from the back of Amiga magazine. So, you know, if people want to uh, want suggest to an article or contribute an article, how can they get in touch with, uh, with you? So, um, you can drop us a line at, uh, magazine at, at Amiga dash addict.com. Um, or you can join our discord. If you go to, uh, Amiga addict.com, um, on the internet, there's a link to our discord there and you can just, uh, pop in your ideas. Um, if you want to write yourself, then again, just drop us an email or, or drop us a message in in Discord, and uh, and we'll try and fit you in with uh, insight. Uh, the problem I've had when I've been writing for the magazine, it's like right, uh, I'll write something for the next issue. Oh, it's full already. <laughs> it's full, <laughs> full. We've already got so much content. Um, so it's it's almost like you've got to get in quick. Um, so so we're not sure on on content, but but we want that variety and that 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 option because we want to be able to say actually this is the right fit here. We're doing an interview with this person. And actually, your 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 article will go well with that. You get a nice theme throughout the magazine, there. and and not just UK voices as well. We want to have like international ones. So in issue three, we've got Doug Compton doing an article about the American scene, and like you know, uh, we want to get all voices from the whole world of Amiga. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, so bringing together the whole Amiga world, even though even though it's UK centric, it's not UK only. It, it everyone is welcome to uh, have their voice heard in it. That's 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 brilliant. Um, Amiga Cami said she wants a calendar, a calendar with Amigas and girls. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> you don't want a calendar with us on it. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a that's funny, uh, Amiga Cami. That's great. So um. So this is uh, obviously this is not only is there a print uh, version, but there's also a digital version, right? So if people want to subscribe to it, they can get the print version or the digital version. Is that correct, or both? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so if people want the they can just buy the digital version uh, on its own. They can buy the print version, or if they subscribe, then they'll get both as, a, as like a perk for, for being a subscriber. So every time, every every issue while they're waiting for their print version to turn up, uh, the uh, the digital issue will go out to them uh, around about um, printing day kind of thing. So um, that's, that's the way it kind of works. Uh, and it, it's, it's been interesting because I, I almost expected people in Europe to largely buy the print version and then outside that it would be all digital but we'd still get orders for for print versions from like australia and, uh, 
and uh, um, like Russia and things like yeah. this. So. We've had some orders from countries like yeah, miles away. You know, yeah. that's that's brilliant. Like I said, I, I think a lot of us in the in the uh, community are all we're collectors, so it's it's nice to actually have something physical uh, you can put on your shelf. Yo, Emco, thank you so much for the follow and uh, great great to see you. Cardleaders White. What's up, Cardleaders White? Sorry if I miss anything in chat. Um, I don't want to break the the flow too much of of the interview. Um, t- Super Tech Boy, right, here's a good good question uh, that's on topic. Um, What's the most unexpected country order uh, that you've gotten so far? So I think I think Russia was unexpected. That was quite recent. And uh, we had, we had Saudi Arabia. We had one from Saudi yeah. Arabia as well, which was which was unexpected as well. That's um, great. I'm not sure whether that was print or, or digital, to be honest. But it's like I, I, there's a little map on the back end, um, and it lights up when when the when a new issue comes in. It's like really <laughs> coming from there. <laughs> it's like okay, sure, sure. All, I've all just sent one to uh, Argentina as well. So, yeah. oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's funny. The Amiga was a little, was definitely had a, some kind of presence in South America. But you know, I when I think of like Asia, I don't think it was there very much. So it would be be cool to get some folks, uh, some subscribers uh, from we Asia. Had, we had Japanese. Um, uh, somebody was they translated the whole app using oh, the yeah. Japanese auto detection. Uh, wow! Uh, all the text and read the whole magazine that way. Yeah, that's dedication. <laughs> so, that... I mean, the thing is, the um, we it goes all over the place. But I think the thing is, because it's been so many years since the Amiga was was at its in its heyday, kind of thing, um, people move. <laughs> so, so uh, it might be that a lot of these people that were in the UK or in Europe have now just like spread across the globe, and now there's. Amiga fans all over the place. I, di- I didn't really think about it that much until quite recently. But yeah, they're everywhere now. That's true. Uh, and also now now with the internet, the internet obviously brings us all together. So people who weren't even interested in Amiga back then are discovering it online. And you know, they watch, you know, different YouTube channels of retro streamers and are like, wait wait a minute, like what's this Amiga thing? I want to discover that. So that's that's a good way yeah. uh, to, to I mean, do it I as mean, well. Ravi one of the things Ravi wanted to do was was to not just have it be a magazine for the Amiga community, because as great as the Amiga community is, they're, they're not the only users. They're not the only people that that are that had Amigas back in the day. So it's 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 nice, and we've we've had a few people come back to us that we've managed to reach. Uh, said, "Oh, this is a great magazine. I don't know anything about the community, but now I've got this uh, I've got this in kind of thing to uh, to read this magazine and and uh, and and uh, get a bit of understanding about Amiga today, um, which they wouldn't have if they're not, you know." coming to your streams or, or going to a Facebook group or whatever it is. So it's, it's, it's so complex these days that like, um, you know, to understand the Amiga, like for, for a lot of people in their minds, it's, oh, Commodore. And that was it. They don't know about Mr. Or Vampire or Gateway or any of this kind of stuff. So we, we find that we have to explain it a bit from kind of perspective of someone that's just um, seen Commodore fail and doesn't know much more than that. No, I think that's really important because, uh, like I was saying to, to Pixels, you know, there's a lot of people getting interested in Amiga who've never experienced it before. You know, a lot of people come to me, uh, and they, especially in these streams, because Twitch is a little bit, it's a younger audience on Twitch generally, and a lot of folks are interested in retro now because a lot of the, you know, the, the younger folks are like, the retro games are kind of cool to them, and they know like Nintendo, uh, even Atari, but Amiga's always been a bit of a mystery for them, but they're like, oh, what is this Amiga? And they're interested in getting into it as well. So it's, it's good that you guys don't just like assume that it's a bunch of Amiga users from back in the day. It's great that you open the doors to, to new Amiga users as well, because I mean, let's face it, the, the Amiga's not going to be around forever if we don't pass it down to the next generation, right? So it's really important to get kids involved, younger people interested in it as well, uh, because you know we're not going to be around forever. We need someone, <laughs> these machines are getting older and, and harder to keep to keep running, let me tell you. <laughs> so it's really important to get some new blood uh, into into the community as well. Yeah, totally. Like, um, uh, you know, when I was younger, I was looking back at the old computers that I hadn't heard of and, uh, you know, systems. And I can imagine kids are just doing that today and going, where, where did all this come from? And uh, but what is this Commodore Amiga? <laughs> you know? Totally. Yo, it's Commodore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Duds 26Q, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that very, very much. Um, if I miss any questions in the chat or I miss something in the chat, do add Amiga Bill and I'll, and I'll try and catch up with you. Um, I think I saw one about will there be a USA retailer? Oh, great. That's a great question. Or, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, 
at the moment we're not doing um third party retailers just because it's hard sending stuff out and then getting a cost and then you know especially being a monthly one um you don't want delays or, or sale or return but um one thing we are considering is doing local printing so if we do get enough people in an area in say america then get a trusted person to then print that and then it can get quicker out to the people with print on demand it's it's a bit easier these days you know? yeah mm, that makes a lot of sense uh but i mean that does make a lot of sense like my first issue took a very long time to come but you know now that things are a little bit back in order um it's not the holidays anymore it's uh, the second issue came came much quicker and uh, the one thing i think I, we, we should probably take a look at it um oh well, is saying make a make a javascript motor for classic amiga <laughs> without the web of today doesn't <laughs> exist um yeah right um ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, you would subscribe if there's USA print. Brings the cost down a lot. But, you know, in a pro arcade, it's a good point. But to be honest, like, the cost of this magazine is, like, pretty pretty darn reasonable. <laughs> what is what is the cost of it, guys? So, it's uh, it, it depends where you are and what you're getting. So, the uh, the digital digital version is uh, four fifty, um, four pounds fifty, I think. Yeah, four pounds fifty. Um, but then, obviously, if you're uh, in Europe or, or, or uh, outside of a... Uh, of Europe, then you've got to add X amount more shipping on, because um, it costs around about four pounds just for us to ship to somewhere else in the world. Um, so but the the margins are slim, <laughs> but we're making it work. Um, so it's it's not too much. It's not too much, but um, obviously you don't pay postage on digital version because you don't have to post it. <laughs> and uh, we don't seem to be doing customs charges at the moment. With um, at the moment, <laughs> with with Brexit coming up, uh, a lot of people have asked. Um, you know about customs charges and we don't seem to have anybody that's i think the package is uh too low value to get uh customs yeah. at the moment at the moment anyway so we, yeah we so we'll it. see fingers so crossed yeah nobody really knows so <laughs> Um, well, I want to take a look at the actual magazine uh, itself. And Milo's got a, a great question. He's asking uh, you, Ravi, is it printed in traditional offset or is it a digital color copy now? Uh, um. I, I'm not sure what that means. Well, in he, instead, of, right? Is, is it kind of like a photo print, or are you using traditional like CMYK uh, printing for the magazine? It's, I believe, it's traditional CMYK printing. Um, because I mean, uh, Jonah, Jonah does all all that stuff, but um, he sent he sent it off to a printer, and and uh, it gets printed based on the the sort of uh, layout copy that he does on um on page stream, um. Uh, but then he generates that into PDF as well to, to put the digital version. So maybe, <laughs> but <laughs> it's, not, it's definitely not our, our side of the, the magazine. We, we we write it and then we give it to Jonah and he does all, all the fancy stuff. Yeah, he does <laughs> yeah. all the magic and turns magic. it into a magazine. Yeah. And it turns into paper somehow. Well, speaking speaking <laughs> of the magic, go, let's let's take a look at it. Because uh, Milo, what, what I can tell you, Milo, is that it, it, it feels amazing. Like it is, it's... Uh, it's it's super super high quality. It's 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 amazing. Yo, Mr. Cola, thank you for the resub, Mr. Cola. You rock, dude. Love that guy, Mr. Mr. Cola. You rock, dude. I'm gonna uh, let's see. Let's go over here. Boom. Oh yeah, it's still it's working. It's working. Good. So here is uh, issue number one. And what I can tell you guys uh, who don't have this magazine, uh, the physical edition, it's it's a top quality magazine. And here's another thing about the post. I I gotta say, I was like. This obviously this magazine means a lot to me because of the cover, <laughs> but and and I was like, man, I hope it's not going to be like all mangled when it comes. I might just have to print uh, the PDF, you know. But this magazine came in mint condition, and knock on wood, issue number two also came in mint condition. So even though it's being shipped uh, overseas, uh, they did they did a great job uh, preserving it. It's it's been it's been uh, this perfect perfect uh, condition, and it's the got, quality it's is pretty well actually. Yeah, no, I can't. Uh, not even like the corners. Couple, but, um, yeah, yeah, we did have we did have we had one that got a bit shredded in in the US as I recall but we obviously we sent out a replacement copy for that um and we had one that got a bit of water damage in the UK when it because we had winter but uh other than that it's been pretty much it I think and, and we had a few people asking about plastic covers as well but um with, with environment at the moment a lot of people have gone to paper including like retro gamer and a lot of the magazines and uh we were look we were looking at these potato starch ones weren't we yeah, yeah, we were, but no idea with those. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and yeah, small they, margins, we've got to keep costs down at the it, moment. So it was yeah, quite it was quite nice because we were getting those questions, um, and then basically the next month 
a load of the UK magazines just started sending things out in paper envelopes instead of plastic as well. It's like, well, that's what we said. <laughs> We're yeah. leading the way. It's <laughs> Super tech boy, I think I will. I I I will definitely get it blown up <laughs> for sure. Um, oh, and just yeah, just a quick note because uh, I I need to post it. Um, but my wife actually took this picture, and I should have given her photo credit, and I didn't. But thank you to my wife for taking this amazing picture. Um, appreciate that very much. So she's she's a published photographer now. Um, uh, so guys, so I'm looking here at the cover. Like I said, it's uh, it the the quality of the magazine is is amazing. Um, it the the it's a glossy cover. And then the inside is is more matte, and all the pages are thick. Like re there, it's really thick. Like it, the paper is is top quality. And I'm noticing here, um, it says what? No cover discs. Cover discs were was the same before. Were a big part of the magazines, the the UK magazines back then. Do you guys plan on on doing a cover disc for Amiga Addict? Um, we've talked about it, and the way that we think we can do it, because honestly, sourcing like floppy disks, seeing if they're available, and all of this, like if they're working you know that could be an absolute nightmare and it could be quite expensive we were thinking in the future of getting somebody on board and having a qr code that you would scan and then it would link you to an adf because a lot of amiga people are even using gotex at the moment and they might not even have floppy drives or the availability to do that so uh yeah, it could be a modern way of delivering with a, a QR code. Yeah, that's a yeah. great way to do it. Like the uh, like for example, on the back over here, you have Mutation Software. You've got Wiz for Mutation Software, and if I'm lucky enough to to have a physical copy of Wiz, and they they supply it with a USB stick, so it's just an ADF file, but it comes on a USB stick, and then you can transfer that to a real floppy if you want. So that that's pretty cool. Yeah, and a floppy would definitely drive the cost way too high. I, I agree. <laughs> um, so here we yeah, are. We'd have Go ahead, we'd have to have someone doing that for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd have to we get have, a de dedicated have. disc person. Yeah, yeah, that that'd be cool. Um, that you would that you would need it. Pixels, is it possible if you turn up your mic just a little bit? I feel, I feel like it's getting even softer and softer. I'm trying my best to ride it on my end. Just me. But um, it's hard when I'm holding the magazine in my hand. I can't keep my my finger on the slider <laughs> on the fader. Like a little closer. Um, so here we got we have Meet the Attic. So there's Jonah on the top, and he was the the main driving force behind this magazine at the beginning. Then we've got Ravi and Ian, that's you, Pixels. And I also see James and Hannah. So who, how many people are working on this magazine altogether? So, so, so James is Robocop's dad. Oh, in, in cool. The chat. Awesome. Yeah. Not, not and uh, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a proofer as well as uh, uh, Pixels. And they do an amazing job um, fixing all my spelling and <laughs> finding all the kind of mistakes in there. And uh, also, he does amazing game reviews as well, like like Pixels yeah. and James are the games people, you know. Yeah, I, I just I just play the games, James. James just destroys the games. <laughs> he just plays <laughs> the whole thing. It's like it's like right. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a review of of Chuck Rock Two. Um, I finished it. It's like what do you mean you finished it? <laughs> I've never finished that game in my life. <laughs> oh, that's, that's and then and then we we've got Hannah as well, and she's doing advertising, and she's done an absolute cracking job. So we've got um, CEX, who are a high street retailer in the UK, and they're advertising an issue too, which is just mad to see a high street retailer advertising in an amiga magazine so that that's she's doing fantastic that's thing. wonderful that is so cool <laughs> great yeah. great job yeah. to that team so it's a, it's obviously a small team but like you said you're uh, pulling in the community to uh to also contribute articles so that's uh right. smart in issue three we've got a, a new guy coming on on board uh, paul paul monahan um from uh, maximum power up podcast he's coming on as a regular writer for us um and uh, he uh, he's 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 our sort of magazine guru. He he's yeah. a load of magazines. He knows all about all of the different magazines. Um, he wrote an article in issue two about his experience with the mega magazines, and he's, we've got one in uh, issue three, which I just finished proofreading this morning, um, which is all about a, ga a multi-format magazine, which uh, is called Games X, which was a weekly magazine which used to be out about nineteen ninety one. Um, and he knows all about this stuff. So it was a, and he's interviewing all the people from all, all that used to work on these magazines back in the day. Very, very cool. Yo, Smash1980, thank you so much for the host. Uh, so you guys definitely have a, a, sol a solid team here. Uh, so I'm seeing you got, uh, I, I love it, you guys got a, a demo scene article as well. You have regulars, you have Amiga Focus, Amiga Insight, On Screen, and The Test Bench. So is this going to be a, like a format that you guys are going to try and stick to uh, for? For every uh, for every issue, 
Yeah, so we'll have like regulars, which is basically stuff like six of the best, the demo team articles, um, test bench, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the great thing about it is we've got people on from all the different podcasts. So we've got uh, Retro Asylum who are doing the demo stuff. We've got RGDS doing reviews as well. Um, we've got Amigos podcast in there. So it's it's like a, a big group of different writers all, all go into their strengths and their areas. Very, very cool. And here's, here's the article. This is great. This is the intro article where I read about the, it selling more than uh, than GQ. That's 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 just nuts. But <laughs> <laughs> so, so we because we, this was the first issue, we really decided we needed a lot of like introductory ones and kind of, you know, uh, welcome to the scene and how it is in in 2020, uh, which, which was when we kind of released it. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because now the other issues we're kind of treating the reader with less less kid gloves but in the first one we were very much introducing them and getting them you know down with what what's going on yeah yeah it's um now that you got them up to speed uh, it's time it's time to get involved so you i see an amiga news section here there's so much amiga news uh happening in the scene today i, I can't I do these streams every week, and originally I just started to do the Amiga News just as a way to kill some time while people showed up uh, for the stream, you know, kill like 10 minutes. But now there's so much news, like, you could just do a whole podcast just on the news. It's, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really stunning. So this Amiga News section is going to be uh, very active uh, for you guys. And um, yeah, and Pixel, if there's any way to get your microphone even a little bit louder, it'd be great. I'm doing my best. The pro um, I'm doing my best to ride the levels the best I can. It's just uh, now that I'm holding the magazine in my hand, it makes it a little bit harder. <laughs> I just tweaked it. Maybe it's a bit better now. That that helps. That helps. I'm still yeah. riding it on my end, but that definitely helps. Um, and I eat, eat that mic, Pixels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I'm seeing articles here. Like, what is an Amiga event? So again, that is uh, your focus on the community uh, here. And Amiga Amiga events are, are something that I I miss dearly. I, I I miss like here we have Vintage Computer Festival East, and we've got some other events, uh, Amiga events in the states too. And like not being able to get together physically is something that that I I dearly miss. Uh, so. It's it's pretty rad that you're bringing uh you know into light that there's all these incredible Amiga events around the world and like you were saying before there was the ones in Germany had almost like two thousand people. Uh, but and and sadly a lot got cancelled because of this awful disease at the moment. But um you know I I think they'll be back they'll be back once everybody can get together again and uh, that momentum will just start growing. And when they come back they're gonna come back with a bang because people are have been like you know, held up at home for so long. <laughs> you know, I think like, <laughs> everyone's just like itching to get out. I, the first couple of parties, are they're going to be like hardcore parties because it's, uh, we've been, we've been repressed for so long, man. We can finally get out and be free and meet again and have a great time, you know? <laughs> uh, and it's, but so not only are we covering like some of the newer stuff, but here's an article um, about Dave Haney and an interview uh, with Dave Haney, you know, one of the legends of Amiga one of the uh, you know one of the Amiga engineers, Amiga three thousand. He's done so much stuff, and he's still active in the community as well. So it's you guys. I see you guys are bringing in some new stuff as well as some history as well. I love some of these photos of Dave Haney. It was, it was just awesome. <laughs> you know, Dave Haney. Um, he used to have parties at his house, and he used to invite everyone uh, to the parties. It was really really cool. He used to have these these bar these barbecues. Uh, Snoop Deville three. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, and you know, here's something that really yeah. interests me. You go ahead, sorry. And this is uh, Kim Justice as well. She's she's done an article, um, and she writes for Retro Gamer, so it's good to have guest guest writers on as well. And uh, you know, Kim's really passionate about Amiga, and this is a uh, kind of all the hidden messages in games for crackers. So you know, you'd crack it, and you get to a certain point, and then you get a rude message from one of the developers <laughs> yeah i see it down there <laughs> that's hilarious yeah. the, 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 and it's and pretty amazing how like the whole crack tro and the whole crack scene kind of led to the demo scene in some ways you know <laughs> that's good yeah kim justice yeah, is, is, is great uh go ahead pixel sorry so some people really love that article just just because it didn't really hold back either so it, it really tells you what the messages were so <laughs> Yo, Snoop Deville, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. Yeah, and that's another cool thing about the fact that this is like a fan-made magazine. You guys don't really have corporate backing, I guess, or even though it might be nice for you. But you guys can just say it like it is. You know, <laughs> you don't have to. You don't yeah. have to hold anything. Yeah. Back. So she she I've, didn't hold back. I've, I think we're, we're we're about the users, you know, and uh, doing it from the user perspective, and uh, that's the way to go. 
Brilliant. And here's the article. I mean, guys, I gotta say, like, it was just like an absolute, you know, honor to be on the cover of this magazine. And you know, I think trying to like talk from the third person, like seeing me on the cover, it was, I mean, it definitely set the tone right from the get go that um, it's a magazine about the community because that's what I'm all about. You know, I don't make any games for the Amiga. I don't make any hardware for the Amiga. Like, I'm just a dude who likes to organize things. I'm kind of like a producer, you know, organizing Westchester Amiga User Group all those years and, you know, organizing these streams now and, and the YouTube uh, channel. I just like to bring people together. And that's my, that's what my, my strength is. So by putting me on the cover, I think you kind of set the groundwork that this is, you know, a magazine about the community and bringing the community together. So that was, that was my takeaway. <laughs> also, you're a good example, Bill, because, you know, your career has been down to Amiga. Um, you know, your video work and all the kind of stuff that you do um, without Amiga. Uh, what, what have you been in that field? Probably not. I mean, when I went to film school, I used the Amiga to make my portfolio to get into it. So that was big step number one, you know, and having the Amiga being able to help me with all my videos when I was a kid in high school, um, I probably, I mean, it, just, it played such a massive role in me getting my career started. So there's a good chance I wouldn't have been in that career if it wasn't for Amiga. So yeah, I mean, the Amiga definitely shaped my life from that perspective for sure. Um, yeah, and this is this is a really good like retrospective too, <laughs> of like all the stuff I've been doing with the Amiga, because you got Westchester Amiga user group in there, then you got me going to the shows, you know, like going down to Vintage Computer Festival Southeast, to Adam Spring, remotely interested, organized, that was amazing. Here's our WOG meetings in the mall. We've been ever since the uh, the we used to meet in the, the local Commodore shop, but ever since they closed down, uh, we we've been meeting this mall, um, which is going to change soon. Here's me doing the streams, the Amigathon with the Amigos podcast, and then. Of, that's a that was a great party I was at with uh, Samia Halvey. She threw a party for me. It's, I made a, a little documentary about her. She's uh, an amazing programmer on the Amiga. She's been programming since 1985 and made a video about her on the YouTube channel. And we had a screening at her at her studio. It was a lot of fun. And this is one of my favorite Amiga memories. Obviously, Ami Expo in 1990, 1990. Jay Miner gave a speech at Ami Expo, and I was hanging out with him after his speech. It was it was really cool. I can do that, Milo. I can. I, I need to. Um, put that together and then here like this one is obviously the most personal one to me this is you know we're, we're this is every year i throw a big party for westchester amiga user group a big gaming party and we've been doing it since the early you know all the way since the early days it's called the game sake game special interest group and that's us uh in my parents basement the same basement where i grew up playing amiga and my atari 800 originally and uh everyone just gets down there and plays around like it's uh you know like it's 1989 all over again <laughs> and my mom is like my mom had a heart attack because she wants to modernize the basement but me and my dad won't let her We're like no no you can't we got to keep you know the wood paneling and all we got to keep it classic and my mom's like you gotta be kidding me and i'm like look mom like your basement's in a magazine now you can't you can never change it again <laughs> keep the wood grain yeah oh yeah that's classic that's classic <laughs> you know uh, night late 1960s 1970s america right there you know, then here's Ami Party. I love traveling, going to the Amiga parties as well. And Ami Party in Poland was, was amazing. The first one I went to was many years ago. And it was when Amiga parties were kind of just starting to get known around the world. They have, they've been doing it for a while, but it was wild traveling all the way like deep into the eastern part of Poland to go to this party. My father-in-law dropped me off um, in the parking lot of Ami Party. And it's kind of like in this industrial area of Poland that's kind of on the border of Ukraine. And he was just like, should I, should I really be leaving you here? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then and then all that's, of a sudden that's the kind of uh thing that we love to cover as well so like you yeah. know like the kelma Amiga legion and uh you know those kind of guys and ami party and the whole polish scene as well which is huge at the moment yeah uh, the polish scene is incredible oh my gosh yeah and there's uh you know vcf east with the bill Hurd, you know designer of commodore 128 we got a lot of folks from commodore at vcf east because it happens like an hour from commodore's headquarters and a lot of the engineers and people who used to work at Commodore are still there. So we did this Commodore retrospective exhibit. That was a lot of fun. There's, uh, that's a MAGFest, a big party here in the States. Um, and Viva Amiga premiered there. And oh yeah, and this is great. I love the, the centerfold here. It's a, it's a great advertisement for Steven Jones's work. He's doing amazing stuff in the Amiga community. His Checkmate mini case, that's brilliant. So yeah, this is awesome guys. Um, this is, this is, this is amazing magazine. <laughs> there's, I mean, it, it, like you were saying, I'm so glad that there's not enough yeah, you guys have too much content because that seems to be, you know, what probably what killed the Amiga magazines that were active, you know, back in the heyday. But you kind of just ran out of stuff to print. But man, there's a lot. I, I haven't even finished reading the first issue yet. I got two weeks ago. There's it's packed with information. Yeah, you get you get value for money. That's why all our pictures are really small because there's so much text in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much good stuff in it too. One of the articles I just wanted to like point out real quick um, is 
where is it it's it really to me it really oh, don't, don't don't forget that one that's oh. an interview with uh mike Batalana. oh that's well. a big so, one yeah uh, <laughs> but, but quite rare that you get an interview with uh Calanto. and mike's going to be continuing the series as well so if you want to know all about the court cases and hyperion and all of this kind of stuff we'll be covering that oh that's something i definitely would like to know more about and uh because it's been it's been quite a rocky road for us here in the media community so it'd be it'd be nice to hear his perspective you know on things because he hasn't said much you know it's great to see him down there as a kid that's really cool <laughs> that's it. these are i mean these are massive articles these are so cool there's uh yeah dodgy rocks i love dodgy rocks my man nivrig uh, and here's an article about making making the magazine with page stream I, I love page stream it's so cool <laughs> uh i still have i still have my page stream that i used to make westchester amiga user group uh newsletter with um and this here's an article that's super cool this is like one of my uh most hardcore followers, DJ Nest. He he's uh, the one that made this Raspberry Pi Amiga with he three D printed a case. And when I saw this article, I was like, oh man, this like this really is a cool magazine about awesome stuff that's happening in the community that you wouldn't necessarily find in like a commercial magazine. So I saw this article, I'm like, man, this this Amiga act is gonna be real cool. <laughs> that's that's a great example of one of our community yeah. articles there. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, yeah, DJ Nest and that that kind of content. You know, we'd love to see all these mad hardware mods. <laughs> yeah, it's it's incredible. Uh, I I've got one myself. I I took a case from a12.net and dropped the Raspberry Pi into it. I'm working on that that video now. There's so many cool things you can do with Amiga. Oh man, this is so cool, guys. This magazine is stunning. It is just absolutely stunning. Uh, I'm just blown away by it i'm very grateful for it i haven't even looked at issue number two yet because like i said it just came like two days ago and i've been getting ready for the stream and a bunch of other things uh so i can't i can't wait to look through this one but i see lemmings on the cover and today is lemmings 30th birthday yeah we definitely yeah. planted that one <laughs> <laughs> so look there's there's a cx advert uh the, the first page that you open so uh, a uk high street retailer that's in the uh in the Amiga magazine, there you go. <laughs> that's more proud to support us, which is amazing. That's uh, congratulations. That's that's huge. That that's that's unbelievable. <laughs> oh man, this, I'm so excited. I'm so excited uh, for, about this magazine, and uh, and what the future holds. Speaking speaking of the future uh, of the magazine, uh, what what does the future hold for Amiga Addict? Do you have any special plans uh, for the for the near future? So so we. Obviously, we're working on issue three at the moment. That's hopefully going to print next week, all being well. Should I do a little preview of issue three? Just talk about it for a second. Yeah, go on. Yeah. So um, we're, we're doing a special on jungle music, which uh, you guys will know is blowing up on the Amiga scene. And we've got some classic people involved, which is Aphrodite, who um, is from Urban Shakedown and uh, was a huge DJ in the 90s and uh, used Amiga to do all his music. We've also got uh, Pete Cannon, who uh, he was doing video game Amiga music on vinyl. So uh, here's one of the wow. vinyls of Pete's. Uh, we've also got Hoffman in there, DJ Nest, uh, Amiga Junglist. So we're going to do a full kind of summary of the jungle scene for that issue. I love jungle music. You know, as you know, I play a lot of music on these streams, and I absolutely I love the jungle. So yeah, and th I've seen some videos um, that uh, that 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 uh, oh, my, my brain is just stopping the work. Uh, the the other DJ you mentioned, um, <laughs> Pete uh, Cannon. Aphrodite. No, no, Pete. Oh, Pete uh, Cannon. Pete Cannon. Yeah, yeah, yeah Pete yeah. Cannon's video where he was using like the Akai synthesizer and so it was amazing stuff. That's so cool. Yeah, he's, I mean he's a legend. It just sounds like an awesome issue. Yeah, I agree. And uh, Hoffman as well. Hoffman's in there and guys like that. So, yeah, Hoffman's yeah. a legend. I did a great stream with him uh, earlier. He's such a talented guy. Amazing as someone can be so good with music uh, as well as like talented with the tech. It's amazing. <laughs> I love this picture. And I love this one. In, in um, I love this picture in, in issue number two. I haven't seen it in, in person yet. Um, That's so cool. It, it really, again, it, it just highlights how, how awesome the community is and everyone holding pictures of the themselves with the magazine that that's just that's awesome <laughs> yeah that was, that was something i really wanted to do because we were getting a few pictures through and uh it's like yeah we've got to put this in the magazine somewhere because it's, it's with it being the first issue it's 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 that excitement of uh of um everyone getting it and everyone seeing it because it's exciting for us as well because <laughs> It's it's all very well. Jonah's like, here's the bag of magazines. I'm, t I'm taking it down the post office now. But actually, it getting to the other end because we mm. don't know whether the magazines have got there unless people tell us. So, so it's good. it's nice to see the magazines in the wild, as it says on the page, because because uh, then we know it's there and we know people are enjoying it. 
And uh, what other news have we got, Pixels, as well? Um... So, um, in issue two, issue three, sorry. Um, so we got uh, we we received the Unamiga from a uh, from uh, Ed Arana. Uh, so uh, James has been putting together a review of that. Um, Wait, did you say got... the Amiga? Uh, 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 Unamiga. Oh, Unamiga. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, we've got uh, Matthew Smith, who uh, of uh, Amiga Power with Attitude album. He's uh, he's he's now going to be doing a a sort of regular um, article for us called Gold Standard, which is a uh, basically him talking about the best game in each genre. So that's going to be quite cool. Uh, we've got regular CD CD32 corner because we we were getting a lot of questions from people saying. They wanted to know a bit more about CD32 and the games on there. This month, we've got a game which was um, exclusive to the CD32, so it wasn't on the 1200 or anything like that. So you can, uh, it's, uh, it's just a, a CD32 title, which is a uh, Flink or the the misadventures of Flink. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot in issue three, um, and one of the cool things we 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 got this month was a uh, uh, someone came to Jonah. I don't know the detail of who it actually was. So do you know that if you publish anything in the UK, you are legally required to provide a copy of your publication to uh, the British Library so we can archive all of British culture kind of thing? And it's like, no, we didn't. Um, and we went and looked, and yeah, it's the law. Um, so we're sending our, our magazines along to uh, British Library, and it means now you'll be able to go into the British Library just next to King's Cross Station in London if you're visiting the uh, platform nine and three quarters for uh, Harry Potter. You can pop next door into the British Library, go into the reading room, and you can request for to to get the copy a copy uh, back issue of uh, Amiga Addict to sit and read in the British Library, which is amazing. <laughs> that's so <laughs> cool! Congratulations, guys! That's amazing. I I, I love that. That's uh, <laughs> so it's, it's it's now a piece of history, which is it's a well preserved piece of history, which is which is amazing. That's so that's so cool. Congratulations. And yeah. we've got um, something coming out for collectors as well in the future, um, mm -hmm. which I think you've got the issue, uh, the images of that, Bill. Let me grab it. Uh, yeah, let's see. Ba -bom, ba -bom. Oh, nice. And th thank you for dropping that in the Discord. I appreciate it. Uh, let's take a look what we have here. So That's... people have been asking us about this since before the first issue came out. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> It's like literally, are you, are you going to do this? It's like we haven't even published the magazine yet. Come on, guys! So, I'm, I'm... so this is our new um, Amiga Addict uh, binder, uh, which you'll be able to buy from uh, from the Amiga Addict shop. Um, it's uh, it's nicely and prof prof professionally produced. You can put your magazines in to keep them, them safe. It's it's big enough for twelve issues, so you can get the whole year in there. Um, it's just about keeping your your magazine because people were saying, "Oh, my magazine uh, got got attacked by the cat, or uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> I spilled my drink on it, or whatever, or I just want it to look even sexier on the shelf." So, uh, um, so yeah, uh, Jonah, Jonah went and, and looked into it. So you'll now be able to uh, um, put all your magazines in a an Amiga Attic binder, um, and it's that, incredibly nineties, isn't it? It sure is. Yeah, it almost looks like a like a almost like a trapper keeper that we had here in the states. That right. it, it looks so good, guys. It makes so much sense because you you focus so much on you know the physical copy. It makes sense that you want to preserve these and you know put them on the shelf. That's that's amazing. <laughs> Very cool, guys. I love it. I think there's another so picture that, too. Let me let me pick that up. So those will be available um, as of issue three. They're not they're not available just right now. Um, we don't know the precise price yet. Um, because Jonah hasn't been invoiced for it yet, so, so we, <laughs> we need to need to figure it out. But uh, but we're we're aiming for around fifteen pounds for, for for a binder, and that's for the whole year. So so it's it's fifteen pounds a year to keep your uh, keep your Amiga addicts in prime fighting condition. Again, it's a, such a reasonable price. You know, I was looking at the, the we were talking about the price before, and like the the cover price is uh, four ninety nine pounds, six dollars and fifty cents, or uh, five and a half euros. I mean that that's such a great price for a magazine this quality i mean and when well, you don't really realize it until you start flipping through the actual physical edition like just how much stuff is in this magazine it's 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 incredible it's uh there's so many i mean the articles are are long and there's a lot of them <laughs> it's so cool let me see uh I think, get... go ahead Robbie. i think there's a bit of a shock because people like get it and they're like ah and then it's like issue two is coming and they're like what what i haven't finished reading it and um you know people haven't been used to 
that much kind of content for for a long time. Yeah, uh, the '90s kind of background on that, um, yeah, yeah. you know, that pattern is just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it, it's perfect. It's so it's very very '90s, very appropriate. And uh, I'm definitely I'm definitely getting one of one of these. <laughs> I don't I doubt they're gonna start an ST magazine FX Go Go, but yeah, you never know. You never know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, uh, Nev Arden, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that very, very much. And X Total Squared, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that too. And Snoop Deville, I'm sorry I'm not count. I didn't call out all the follows I usually do. Uh, but uh, doing the interview, so I appreciate that. Yeah, the Unamiga is going to be really fantastic. I mean, talking talking about the the Amiga community. I mean, Edu Arana. I mean, that guy is just out of control. I mean, I can't even. I can barely keep up. You know, with each issue of your magazine. But that guy's got like a new piece of hardware coming out. It seems like every week. He's unbelievable. <laughs> the guy's yeah, unbelievable. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's hard I don't to know keep where he gets all the ideas from. So sometimes, uh, sometimes we'll write an article, and then halfway through, like I was writing one the other day, going, "Oh, there's no update for." OS four for so many years, and then they just drop the update in the middle of me writing the article. And it's like so much is going out; it's uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's a good problem and a and a bad. You know, it's bad that you know because you're like, oh man, I was just writing that article, and the magazine's going to print. But then it's a good problem that there's so many cool things happening in the community. Uh, retro th- problem to have. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Because yeah. I think uh, you know not having enough content was definitely a problem when the original Amiga magazines died. So it's just great that you guys are loaded with content and you're finding some really cool stuff. I- I'm jealous of that vinyl. You know, I'm a big vinyl guy, Ravi. I love vinyl. I got the Hoffman vinyl. I got a whole collection of Amiga vinyl and regular vinyl. So I'm definitely. Uh, I-, I got. I would love to pick up that that vinyl that you got there. Um, oh, you'll be interested in uh, issue three because they're talking about Aphex Twin playing Amiga oh, Tune. No um, way. To people that, yeah, there's lots of name drops in this one and lots of stuff that's going to kind of blow your mind. Uh, yeah. Last year, even a- Aphex Twin playing tunes. Yeah. Aphex Twin, I'm pretty sure he played that tune here in New York. Um, it was right down the street from one of my, my friend's concert when he dropped it. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, what's up, Nivrig? Um, yo, Retro32UK has got a great question. Um, will you be offering back issues for all the monthly magazines going forward? Yes. Yeah, so so um, we've uh, Joan has been very keen to... Because to, obviously we have to order X number of issues um, in bulk when we go to print. Which is... Uh, and, Having not done this kind of thing before, we've been we've been learning lessons. Um, just going, we uh, have no idea how many <laughs> we're going to sell, so we just have to guess. Um, but we've done pretty well, and, and Joan has been very keen to make sure that we keep uh, we over order a little bit, so we've got a bit of extra in stock, so we can offer back back issues. So, um, so at the moment, obviously, the current issue is issue two. Um, so there's only one back issue because there's only one of the magazine, but you can you can get back issues of issue one on on the website at the moment, um, and then as we move into each new current issue, the the uh, the other issues will shift into into um, into back issue mode um, until we run out basically. And we're hitting about I think we're printing one thousand eight hundred at the moment, and we're hitting yeah yeah. yeah yeah, and that's also with some of the older stuff as well. So getting good numbers. That's amazing for for the second issue. I mean, that's incredible that you're getting <laughs> you're getting the numbers like that. That just shows the strength of the media community and, and how much there is uh, demand for it. Yeah, that's yeah, incredible. Um, if you guys want to subscribe to Amiga Act magazine, uh, either digitally or the print edition, or uh, you want to order the gra- the amazing binder, an easy way to get the link is you do exclamation mark Amiga Addict, Amiga Addict in the chat, and it'll link you to their website. But their website is amiga addictcom um, yeah, eighteen hundred readers is fantastic. It's really, really great. <laughs> uh, you got congratulations, you know, guys, and, congr- and and we're hoping to build on that as well. We've we've, we've kind of uh, got an article coming up in Retro Gamer. They've been really supportive. Um, this this issue of Retro Gamer, where they're talking about us, and they said, you know, we don't usually um, we don't usually talk about rival magazines, but uh, because we're grassroots, they're going to support us, which is really nice. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's, Retro Gamer is a quality magazine. Game. Yeah, and it's it's very cool that uh, that's very very cool of them uh, supporting because they're not direct competition. You know, like Retro Gamer does all the retro, where this is Ami- just niche Amiga. You know, so <laughs> sorry, Pixels. What were you gonna say? Um, yeah, I think that's out next week. That 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 copy of the uh, Retro Gamer. So 
some some time next week. That I know they're having a bit of, bit of trouble at the moment because obviously none of the news agents are actually open mm. to, to sell the magazine. So it's all it's, they're basically in, that, in the same position as us. It's all the magazines are online order only kind of thing. So, uh, um, but yeah, so it's going to be uh, out there next week. And um, they've done a sort of short like email interview with the uh, with Jonah to uh, cover off. I, I've seen some of it. I don't know if I've seen all of it, but. Uh, I, th- I think he sh- no, he showed us all of it, um, just so we could compare to what actually ends up in the magazine. Because yeah. <laughs> it's interesting for us because we've never done this before. It's like, so when you interview someone, how much of the interview do we actually put in? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you put it all in, or can, can, is it okay to like cut it to pieces? If someone sends you like about you know seventy thousand words, which does happen, <laughs> um, so it's going to be interesting to see how much actually ends up in, in retro game. So it's a, we're we're learning as we go along, really. Uh, but they've been really supportive. It's it's really nice. I've got um, a friend, Paul Jury, who's one of the writers, and I just go around and slip an Amiga addict into his letterbox every month. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. He's like, I owe you about five pints now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold him to that. Hold him to that. Um, yeah, everyone's saying it's such a great looking magazine. They're loving the the issues. Um, Pred Zeta, yes, I need to post that for sure. But you know what? Because a lot of folks are in this picture are in the stream. Let me let me just make it uh, bigger here, and we can go through. Whoops. Uh, let me go to where is it here? Uh, there you guys are. Let's take a look because a lot of these folks are in the stream now. So you know, let's give them a little a little recognition here because uh, I really appreciate it. The, up here in the in the upper left corner is Jonah, and Jonah is he's really. The main man, right? When it comes to the magazine, he's the one that started it all off. So huge congrats to Jonah. Uh, he, he's the guy with a house full of boxes. <laughs> <laughs> and then here we've got Nivrig, uh, creator of Dodgy Rocks, and he's a huge supporter of mine. He's in these streams every week. I think he's even here, even though it's today's Valentine's Day. So I know it's, it's hard for some folks to be here in the stream. I forgot about that when I originally scheduled. But hey, it's Sunday, man. I'm, nothing's going to stop me from streaming. My wife's awesome. <laughs> Love you, babe. There's Nivrig, uh, Kim Justice. Uh, there's there's you Ravi that's uh, I, I just I love everyone's like smiling uh, faces this is this one's hilarious there's Craig in his <laughs> Craig in his uh, <laughs> in his robe <laughs> it blows my mind I never thought like I would see myself you know uh, you know on the cover of a magazine with like you know Craig in his robe in his living room holding and reading it it's hilarious <laughs> and there's one of my VIPs right there the first one actually Maya 82 uh, she's she's psyched about the new issue uh, really, really great supporter of mine. She's in these streams every week as well. Uh, I'm not sure who that is, but that's a great picture. <laughs> I can't remember. I think I think that was off Facebook, as I recall. That's great. I love the cat. Even you know, even that's, yeah, that, that's my thing. cat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's your cat. That's great. Even the cats uh, love Amiga Addict. That's that's awesome. Uh, and we got some. You know, it's so funny because I probably know I probably know these folks, but I just don't um, know them by face. <laughs> I love this with the dog. The dog is is looking at the magazine so too. That's a bark bit off a uh, off the Amigos community. Oh, great, great! And uh, and Edvin Helland, who's in the chat. Um, oh, this is Edvin here as well. Yeah, yeah. See, Edvin, Edvin. Edvin is in my streams a lot, man. And I, I know him. I never saw him before. That's see, great. See, he just he's just slipped in the Hoffman vinyl behind his head there as well. It's a nice touch. <laughs> it's a very very yeah. nice touch. Uh, that that's very very cool. Uh, and then that's a funny one too. <laughs> uh, Amiga act in the wild. Uh, like I said, I and then um, uh, this was our first first picture. Uh, the guy in front of the Christmas tree. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Where, where, when we were like, oh my god, someone's actually received it. <laughs> and, uh, it worked. Yeah. it worked. Yeah, there's pixels. There you are. Very, looking and this good is there. our new member, new member of staff next to Paul, uh, Paul Monahan, uh, next to pixels. Yeah, right there. So that's me. <laughs> yeah, there's there's pixels right there. And, yeah, this, that's and this is Paul. Paul. Uh, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Oh, very good. Great stuff, guys. Very, very cool. It's so and cool. It's James. Oh, which one's James? That's James, yeah. All the way here. Bottom, right. Right. bottom right, yeah. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Very cool. I, I'm gonna I can't wait. I'm finally gonna I wanna make like a you know, a little YouTube video, cut down this interview to uh something more bite sized and make a little YouTube video about it. And I got an idea. Of course I'm gonna, you know, utilize uh, the cover of <laughs> issue number one. Uh so it was uh it blows my mind. It's it's so cool. I the feeling of opening that magazine. I almost didn't believe it. Even when Jonah came to me at first, like we we're saying, I almost I almost didn't believe it. I'm like, what? You're gonna you, you want to interview me? At first, it's just an interview, cool. And then it's like, wait, you're gonna put me on the cover? That's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it's amazing. 
<laughs> oh man yeah, oh, that, that, yeah. that fresh magazine smell as well really really hits you when you take it out which is good um yeah kind of miss that it does it, it really it's got that smell i remember uh, at the beginning of the stream hitch told me to smell the the um the, the instruction manual to Rygar, and it's got a good smell. And this magazine has got a very good smell as well. Um, oh, Mick Geezer, Mick Geezer uh, wants me to show you guys a picture. Let me let me grab it really quick because it's it's a good one. It's kind of it's kind of legendary. Um... <laughs> and if I, anybody has any questions, then uh, feel free to ask whilst we're on. Yeah. 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 This... yeah just just at, at Bill, so we, so we can say them. But we'll uh, answer what we can. Let's see. Desktop. Let me go here. Da -da -da -da. Whoops. There is, there's Mick Geezer. <laughs> it's such, yes, it's such nice. a good one. It's such a good one. He's got the Peroni, and he's having a great time reading the Amiga Addict magazine. <laughs> yeah, because Amiga Addict has a shiny cover, so if you spill your beer on it, you can just wipe it clean. Yeah, very smart. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, nice one, Mick Geezer. Great stuff. Um, what is oh, that? Peroni's lovely as well. <laughs> yeah, Peroni's really good. I'm going to have to have a beer soon. Um, Oh, that's a great question. FX Gogo is saying, how are you managing the page count against uh, incoming articles? So we have a, a we we have a standard uh, magazine size of about 54, 55 pages. Um, so we we have a, a number of pages we set aside for that for advertising. Um, and just to be clear, because we've had this question in the past, it's like, oh, about about half the magazine is adverts. It's like actually no, it's, it's about it's about. Five, ten, six pages, five or six, isn't it? Something like that. So, uh, it so there's not a lot in there. So we set those aside, um, and we set aside the the regulars sections, and then it's just what we can fit in between, really. Um, generally, the the obviously the lead article is going to be longer, um, and and generally some of the bigger interviews will be longer as well. Um, but yeah, we just have a standard size because, and the reason why it's that size is because to get it in the uh, the letter format um, envelope that we uh, that we send it off in to, to keep it in the in the postage range and not have to charge people more, um, it has to be under two hundred and fifty grams. So mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's two hundred and forty three <laughs> grams. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it so that's why it's that size um, and and not twice as big because uh, a and and. Yeah, it's, it's how many how many pages we can actually produce in a month because we're all and, doing it part time. So yeah, and now we're getting more people um, contributing. It's 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 becoming more like we now pick and choose and and create it a bit more, which is yeah. which is really nice. So many people want to get involved, and uh, that's fantastic. So yeah, we just have to kind of pick and choose and get the right balance and range of subjects. That's that's uh, it's a very very uh, nice problem to have that so many people want to get involved and contribute and it's going to make for for a great magazine you know a lot of magazines I feel um, it's almost like they're closed off you know to, to the general public like the general public is just there and consumes them but this one is more interactive the general public can actually contribute to it as well so that's uh, that's really a nice a nice thing to have uh, speaking of community here we are again in issue number two this is the first time I'm opening it up so I'm all excited about it um, we've got UK user groups and Amiga meetups that's that's fantastic lots of people are asking about a list of Amiga user group. Um, Terry, Terry, Donnie, Dale Jr. Thank you so much for the follow. I would love, you know, Crash Override, I would love to write some stuff for it too. If you guys want, I could write well, some well, stuff, but yeah, it, it's, it's tricky because I, I'm, I'm my, I know you guys, I, I, again, I applaud you because I know how fast one month comes around. It, I mean, especially now that we're older, I want, it's, months now seem like days or weeks to me. It's kind of scary. Um, and I just, I, between the streams and the, uh, and the YouTube channel, it's just like, man, I am just, maxed out i put a lot of time into these it's like it's hard to take on new projects but i would love to occasionally write an article for it too i got i want to be continue to be a part of it as well what's up amigo well, we're, yeah we're, we're 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 trying to get on schedule <laughs> so <laughs> you know it's always it's always tough but uh once we get into the flow yeah it's, it's yeah it's we're, good. We're, we're trying to get where rap is with the with the retro hour we're trying to get to a point where we've got a load of articles that are actually just written and in a backlog and we can just pull them out when we need them but we're not there yet <laughs> but that that took about four years so <laughs> let's yeah, <exactly>. see <laughs> uh, here's a great article by adam spring about uh dave needle memories of dave needle that's oh, uh, oh yeah that that article is amazing because dave needle he's like a really really good top engineer in commodore and he's he was so passionate like he started out as the janitor mm-hmm 
there because there were no positions, but he just wanted to be in the company so much and then ended up like developing the Atari Lynx, the 3DO with RJ Michael. So um, it's just great to have a tribute to Dave because uh, he's just an amazing engineer and not that many people talk about Dave that much. And, you know, he needs to be put up there with uh, the other Amiga engineers. Yeah. It's so yeah, it's true. I think I first heard that story actually in in Viva Amiga about him being the janitor and then becoming like one of the key engineers. It's what what a story. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, what's up, Amiga Live? Amiga Live would be a great article too. I mean, I I don't know if you guys are aware of what Amiga Live is, but it's this, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, well, there's, well, I know you are. Page. I played it with you. <laughs> there's an there's an interview with a, with a Amiga Live in the first issue. So uh, so yeah. we have covered it. Uh, to an extent, but yeah, I mean, I was playing, I was playing Amiga Live until four AM last night, <laughs> so so I definitely know what it is. <laughs> and and um, we we had a feature in on DMA Designs as well in the uh, in the second issue, and um, you know, DMA are one of those companies that went on to do you know Grand Theft Auto, and <laughs> now one of the world leading kind of companies, and that and that was birthed from the Amiga. So really interesting. Yeah, I see it right here. I mean, Lemmings, 30 years ago today. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's scary. It's scary, too. I think I think that's one of the things we want to do with the magazine. Is it, It's very easy to get, go to all the big, you know, well-known Amiga companies, things like that, and do articles. And obviously, we're going to do that like we've done with DMA Design there. Um, but we have the opportunity to go to a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the people and a lot of the devs that are probably less covered. Because, um, mm. I mean, you think of how many developers and how many companies that were developing for the Amiga back in the day. And people love those games too. Um, so we want to cover, we want, we want to get those stories as well. Because because it's very, all the big magazines are always going to focus on your, your sensible, your teens, your teens and all that kind of stuff. But you want to cover everything and we have the opportunity to do that. And and also like Amiga was used in so much development, even even up to the PlayStation, people were still kind of using D Pain uh, to do some textures and stuff. And it, it's like I mentioned the um, Lynx there and the three uh, D O, and uh, you know the Lynx was kind of developed on using Amiga hardware and software and stuff. So really really interesting to see those connections with like wider technology. Yeah, that's that's so cool. Yeah, links um, with you know it was originally on Epics, right? And with uh, with RJ and Dave Needle. Mm. Um, this is oh, here's here's Super Sprint. Here you go, Mick Ezer, uh represented. And that uh, that port looks incredible, and I love it how does. you guys give a lot of love to the CD32 as well. I know a lot of CD32 fans uh, really really appreciate that as well. Yeah, that's the uh, Retro Asylum boys. They, 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 they love the CD32, so they kind of jumped on board and did a whole section on that. And that's going to be a regular one, isn't it? Ooh, Amiga yeah. Light Guns. That's the Amiga Light Gun favorites. That's cool. There's a new Light, light Gun game coming out uh, in the not too distant future I'll be showing here, too. Um, so that's, We're that's well pretty aware. cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. I, I mean, I, I never had an Amiga Light Gun uh, back then, so it's... This is a whole whole world of me games that I've never experienced before. My only yeah, and it's a guide. It's a guide on how to hack the um, Sega light gun, and then actually be able to make it compatible on the Amiga. So there's a little rewiring um, kind of diagram there. So yeah, yeah. I, th I think um, because we 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 uh, spoke to the guys making the new light gun game, um, and James was going through. Um, I think it's probably Operation Wolf or something like that um, on the Amiga, and it has. A readme file telling you how to do that. Um, he said, "Right, I'm going to do this," and so he made it himself. And then he wrote an article and put it in the magazine. And the people again, "Wow, didn't know you could do that." <laughs> so it's it's cool. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I tell you, you still need the CRT though, right? Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, that's uh, that's that's amazing though. <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, here you are. Here's Ravi DJing. This is a great article. I love it. And there's your two twelve hundreds next to each other using the uh, the PT twelve ten software. You know that Akira and Hoffman are working on. That's amazing. <laughs> I I love your yeah. Streams. I've got some little little tips and stuff like turning off the audio filter in there and uh, using you know a stereo output and stuff because because you always need to uh, do a little few hacks to get a good sound out of you, Amiga. You taught me about the mono trick, where if you only plug into the left uh, RCA output, yeah, then yeah. you get mono. That's so cool. That helped me on streams a few times. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a, that's an essential tip, and not that many people know about it as well. I never knew about it ever. I, I always would. What I would always do is I would take a Y connector, 
and just take plug it into both left and right and then put it into one RCA cable. I never knew you could just plug it into the left channel. Yeah. Great stuff, guys. This is uh I, I can't wait to read this article. I mean this whole issue. I like I said, this is my first time opening it up. It looks it looks awesome. I haven't I guess and I haven't even finished uh, issue one yet because I was I was waiting for the physical copy. Um as much as I love the the PDF and as convenient as there's nothing like Holding it and smelling it. <laughs> oh man! Well, so, issue issue three is nearly there, isn't it, Pixels? So it is, we're uh, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 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 rolling on to issue four soon. Oh god, more writing. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. I don't know how you find the time to do it, but I'm very very grateful uh, that you do. Um, it's been awesome chatting with you guys. If anyone else has any questions, uh, feel free to fire away. Is there uh, if there's anything you guys want to add that we haven't talked about? I think it was pretty. Pretty thorough, but if you guys have everything else you want to add, uh, please please go for it. Uh, I think we've pretty much covered it. I saw saw Crash Override in the chat saying interviews with the old Amiga magazine editors would be interesting. We have already had some contact with some Amiga magazine editors who've come to us pretty much and said, this is interesting. Can I write something? So in in that second issue, there's a uh, one of the old Amiga action um, editors has written a little article about de- his day in the life of... Uh, of being on the magazine and uh uh mogs in the chat is a uh, is 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 a um, paul our, our magazine guy so oh, cool. uh, so so he's got he's got even more contacts so so there's definitely possibilities for that and it is interesting because because a lot of these guys are still interested in the uh in the um in the scene and uh they, they almost can't believe that we're doing this <laughs> so it could get, it could get them back your... into it you know, they, they, yeah. they could be like, oh, Amiga magazines, man. That was, you know, I remember doing those. Who knows? They might start helping you out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Crash Override also asks, like, is this your full time job? <laughs> and uh, n- no, no, all of us are part time and yeah. uh, like uh, a lot of volunteers and, um, you know, people have to balance kids, um, <laughs> you know, uh, life. Uh, stuff that's going on so you know we'll have some writers that suddenly over the weekend it gets really busy with kids and then other people will take the slack and stuff so you know we're all we're all working on this part-time and mainly for the love yeah i, I don't know how jonah does it because he's, he's a relatively new father as well yeah he's <laughs> got well, a newborn as well as printing as, as well and as doing all of this, this. yeah <laughs> Yeah, originally I wanted to have him on as well, and then he's just like, he's like, I can't. He's like, I'm just so slammed. I, I and I have no spare moments. <laughs> like every spare moment. I think uh, he had a rocking a newborn baby in one arm, and then packaging the Amiga addicts in the other. <laughs> <laughs> that's incre- that that is some yeah. crazy dedication right there by Jonah. That's, that's amazing. John McDermott's looking forward to submitting uh, his article on Terrible Fire. Very cool. Nice. Right. Yeah. 17 bit you guys are doing a great job with Amiga Attic. The print quality is amazing, says Lucas. Much better than the magazines I used to read in the nineties. Pretty impressive. That's what I'm saying. Like it's so I keep using the word thick. It is, man. It's like it, it feels like a like a museum piece almost. And and it is in a library, which is so cool. <laughs> it's so it's, And and I, I really like that he said, you know, um it's different from the ones in the nineties because you know, we we could have just done a clone of the nineties stuff, but we're trying to do something new with yeah. the community and something a bit different. So uh, we don't know quite what it is yet, but uh, it's, it's definitely something new that we're doing. It's kind of balancing the feel of of the 90s stuff with our own unique kind of a uh, take. Because it's actually got to do with anything, anything you create, anything you you uh, you, you publish. Uh, it's got to have you, a little bit yourself in it. So this is and also uh, uh, retro hour is not my full time job as well. That's part time. <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a web web developer. That's my full time so, job. Somewhere in the middle of all that. <laughs> Ra- yeah. Ravi, Ra- Ravi doesn't sleep. Uh, <laughs> just so you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Yeah, and the fact that this is made on Amigas is, is really spectacular too. I mean, I mean, you know, I don't even think of you know when I think of next gen Amigas. To me, next gen Amigas are almost retro themselves. You know, and then the fact that you can um, actually make a modern magazine with one uh, is unbelievably cool <laughs> oh yeah it's uh it's, it's really really wonderful guys um yeah so exciting news we got the binder coming out uh you guys are in the the library in in london uh what's the name of the library again uh, british library the british library it's, that's uh, so cool it's uh, big and fancy <laughs> it's probably kind of like the new york public library big columns it's that kind and, of thing, yeah, yeah yeah brilliant yeah 
<laughs> Thank you, Hemo Stick. <laughs> no, I'm not posing with the black 1200. You know, hey, that could be a good article. Um, the, the, my pimped out Amiga 1200. That could be a fun one too. Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing how he does it, Super Tech Boy. I don't know how Robbie does it. Uh, Goldfish says the magazine is great. Can't wait for issue three. I mean, I can't wait for issue three either. But I still, like I said, I still I haven't finished issue one, and then I've I've not I haven't read anything in issue two yet. I just opened it up, so I'm super excited. It's it's nice to have the PDF back up, but I really like want to read the actual physical copy. Um, Amiga Life, yeah, thank you for the raid and the host. I th I think we're all like that. We we just like to uh, hold it and 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 stroke the pages. <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say, Ravi? Uh, I was just going to say we've got um, we're also talking about Amiga Island in um, in issue three as well, and uh, you know a world of Amiga we're talking about that. So we've got quite a lot of lot of new stuff coming up, yeah. And issue four is is going to be really exciting as well. We've already got articles firing in for that. <laughs> the one yeah. the one with the the jungles that is, you said that was issue three, right? What's yeah, three? yeah, yeah. Because we want to try and do it. Um, so it's basically like. You're covering a personality one time. You're covering a game another time. You're covering a, a famous company. You're covering a piece of hardware, and just kind of, you know, keep it flowing and keep it uh, a bit different and, uh, you know, not stagnant, which is uh, what we want to go for. Any well, articles on Morphos as well? That's a great yes. question. Yes, um, I'm I'm the next generation writer at the moment, and my um, Power Mac is just packed in so um <laughs> i was using more fast but it's just broken so i might have to do a, a repairing your power mac <laughs> yeah goldfish is asking would you consider doing a big christmas edition I, I, we, we definitely want to do a christmas edition i probably won't be bigger i know i know that was something that used to happen um with the eu magazines back in the day but obviously we've we're, rest, we're restrained by the uh, postage size but we definitely we, we said because obviously we started around about Christmas. It's like, oh, should we do Christmas issue? It's like it's the first issue. <laughs> we've got to we've got to set the we've got to set the bar of what people are going to expect from the magazine. But we're already thinking twelve months down the line to next Christmas. Yeah, absolutely, we'd like to do something with a with a a little bit of a a festive feels with it probably. That would uh, you know the other cool thing about a Christmas issue would just be like it'd be like your one year anniversary. You know, so that would be that'd be it's nice. True. Yeah, that'd be it's nice. True. Um, you you need uh you need to be in W H Smith to complete the Amiga UK nostalgia as Retro Thirty Two UK. Um, we would love that, yeah. That yeah. One day if we could get it in the shops, woof, that would be so good. McGeezer says it'd be great to get an interview with Tony Wyland. That would that would be a good one. He's a legend. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one actually. Yeah, I that, mean he's done he's done so much for the community with the with Winio A. Winio um, is like isn't I mean it's mind blowing. It's <laughs> gold yeah. standards, isn't yeah. that? So yeah, Matt seventy five. Thank you so much for the follow. In a pro arcade. Thank you for the raid. Appreciate you, Interpro. <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying. Someone else asked something. Oh, oh, Nehi is asking. Are there any like super technical articles coming out? Um, uh, I think there will be. Yeah, um, from some of the contributors. The thing is, like, uh, until the until it's done, we don't really see all the articles because some people are handling some areas or some people are handling another. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there will be some in-depth technical dives, definitely. Yeah. Very cool. You uh, love... The Unreal one will be quite technical, I can imagine. Uh, which one? Sorry, I cut you off there. Uh, the On Amiga, or starting to look at the FPGA uh, things. So. That On Amiga is incredible. I just love all the, the modern options for, for running Amiga. You got Raspberry Pi, software emulation, you know, Mister, and then On Amiga. It's so cool that we have so many uh, so many options because... This hardware is not getting any younger. <laughs> yeah. You'd love to see uh, some programming tutorials. Yeah, that would be very cool. That'd be very cool. I, you guys got to put, you know, for all time's sakes, maybe put in some basic code and, you know, some like three pages of basic code and you have to try and type it in and see if it works. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's how I learned. I learned. I, my I remember like yeah. Amiga format and see you Amiga used to always have at the back tutorial sections as well. So, yeah, yeah we, we definitely want to replicate that. It, it's, it's almost the hardest thing for us because... We've got so many ideas, um, but we we can only put, we can only produce so many pages <laughs> every month, and it's like right, okay, well, I'd like to put tutorials in, but once you should put some that in, something else has to go out. So, so um, you've got to you've got to play it off. We'll definitely do it, but it's kind of like when when do we do it? Because um, if you look at like an old Amiga format, like uh, like this one from '95, 
this is like uh, 140 pages long, which is like three times longer than our magazine. Um, so it's it's way fit everything in. I mean, I know a lot of this is adverts anyway, but uh, but it's still a lot harder. It's it's been nice actually. It's it's, it's weird what people like about the magazine because you get obviously you get people liking the smell and that's but it's people really like the fact that it has adverts in it because the nostalgia of reading an old print magazine and having all the adverts for everything in it um it's not they're just going oh great I, the opposite page is an advert for some amiga games <laughs> it's like yeah okay we had to put some advertising in so it's, it's good that you're enjoying it kind of thing well, you know, it's it's like it's, it's appropriate advertising, you know, because uh, anyone's reading this magazine is going to want to buy Amiga stuff. So, like, why not serve them, uh, you know, quality advertising and let them be aware of of things that are available to purchase. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. The uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Cra Crash is asking, uh, do we pay writers? And that that's two paid staff at the moment, which is uh, me and Jonah, and then we're trying to pay proofreaders as well and we'd hopefully want to pay everyone in the end of the day but also it's it's very small kind of part-time uh, you know because we're on yeah. really really tight margins at the moment it's really tight but... margins so a lot of us are just doing it for the love of it i mean i, I keep saying to jonas so don't worry about, don't worry about paying me i enjoy i'm enjoying writing for the magazine to, to yeah, make sure you yeah. make sure your business is running fine <laughs> for the time being we'll sort thing that is out we way. don't we don't want to bankrupt jonas exactly. <laughs> so was, that's what we keep saying <laughs> exactly um, oh, here he is. He's in the chat. There's Jonah. Um, the, hey. he, he said, uh, hi, guys. I've got magazine box in one hand and baby on the other and a Peroni balanced on my Amiga 1200. Before <laughs> when I go out of the stream, great interview, guys. And thanks, Amiga Bill, for having the team on. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Jonah. Thank you. I mean, most importantly, thank you. I mean, this is this this effort right here is is monumental. And even Ravi was saying and I was saying I was like when you first came to us, we're, I was like, this guy wants to make a new Amiga magazine. Is he crazy? But, I, you know, it's like, hey, the, you know, that's what that's what brilliance is, man. It's like you you had a dream and you made it happen. And not only did you make it happen, but you like exceeded all of our expectations. I never imagined the magazine would be like this good. I mean, this is a top, top quality magazine. And it's a super exciting for the Amiga community. It's a great gift for the Amiga community. And uh, we appreciate you very much, man. Congratulations, man. You did it. You did it, Jonah. Like, you freaking did it. Like, you're amazing. <laughs> so... Uh, unbelievable! I don't know. I don't know how. You, I don't know how you did it. You're just uh, blowing my mind here. So it was, it was funny. I was reading um, on the forums around when the first magazine came out, just talking about uh, paying writers, and somebody was saying, "I wonder how much they paid Dave Haney for his interview." It's like, <laughs> with what? <laughs> we haven't got any yeah. money. <laughs> it's like, so I think they're expecting us to be paying out like you know, like five thousand pounds or something to it for, for Dave Haney to a. To, to interview with us like no it doesn't work that way <laughs> yeah every, everybody's doing it for love pretty much at the moment yeah it's, yeah cool yeah simon says it all comes down to the community and the team we did it thanks everyone yeah it's true with that's brilliant uh it, it definitely it's definitely not a one person uh, operation but man you you had the dream and you had the vision and you and you made it happen so everyone, you, everyone's every ship's got a captain you know <laughs> um dave hey, haney's hey. amazing yeah he uh He's he he gives so much to the community. Like I said, he comes to VCF East and he gives presentations at VCF East because he lives nearby with the other Commodore engineers. And he had those yeah. awesome parties all those years. It was really he's a really great guy. Mm. Um, what were you gonna say, Pixels? Yeah, the the, the community has been great actually because you, you hear some things about about some parts of the Amiga community and you you we were were a little concerned about what would happen, but actually everyone's been really nice. Uh, everyone's been there, uh, wanting to get involved and. Uh, and being being really really pleasant, um, just just as you get in in your streams, really. But um, um, it's really it's really helped um, get us over the line because obviously we can't produce the magazine without anyone wanting to buy, <laughs> wanted to buy it, kind of thing. Yeah, so, without uh, the readers, we um, <laughs> we just have like paper that we're trying to shove on people. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The media community is incredible. I know what you mean um, about being nervous a little bit. And actually, it took me so long to start like the YouTube channel and stuff because I was worried about that as well. I saw some really nasty things go down in some forums, and I was like, oh man, I don't know. But the truth is, like, once you jump in, like, you realize like ninety nine point nine percent of the people are. They're not just nice, like they're incredible people. And some of the, some of the folks who come to these streams and 
follow the YouTube channel. Like they, they become like close personal friends of mine. And my friends from WOG, like I've been best friends with Anthony since we were 12 years old, man. And it's like the Amiga that brought us together. You know, the Amiga community is just, it's, it's incredible. And even though I haven't met some of these folks in person and they come here, you know, every Sunday to watch the streams, I feel like, like, I feel like I'm close friends with them. It's such a tight knit community and a really special one. So they're also very supportive. And those, there's just a, those few folks who are just, loud on some forums like they're they're unfortunately they're far and very few between you know <laughs> and but they, also i think having a diversity of opinions makes it so people don't feel like they've messed they've missed out you know so if you're into one area or if you're into one little system you're you're, you're going to find something in the magazine about that and that that's really important i think mm, mm, everybody absolutely. feels uh, welcome you know yeah, exactly. And and you and you let everyone express their opinions, you know. Um yeah. you, like you're saying, you're gonna show a different opinions about the same topic. So everyone's welcome to to bring their opinions. It, it will be well. edited, of course. But, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not not total free reign, but yeah, yeah. Uh, all opinions count. Yeah. Very cool. Dan Dan Wood is the man, he's a great guy. Like I was saying before, he's a total pro. Amazing. Sup, yeah, I think Dan Dan wanted to get involved, but he said he want he wanted to be a reader first, so he wanted to sit and read it and take it in. But but I've twisted his arm, and he will do an article later. <laughs> Excellent, guys. Excellent. Well, it's been a real pleasure talking to you and uh, interviewing you guys. I hope I hope we had fun being on the stream. Uh, it, these are pretty pretty casual and. Boy. Always. The magazine is fantastic. I'm I'm proud. I'm proud to like have a new Amiga magazine on my shelf right there. You know, with Amiga Future and some of the classics as well. It's uh, it does justice to the Amiga. It has exceeded all my expectations. And I just the most important thing for me is I really feel that community vibe because I'm all about the community. I'm all about bringing people together. And like I I smell it in this magazine. Like it's there. Like you guys, it's definitely a magazine for the community by the community. And it's. Uh, it's really exciting to read because I, I want to see like, oh, let's see what so-and-so is up to this month. You know, it's like I want to see what cool mm. project, you know, I, I want to learn about this month. Someone's going to be doing something cool. Like when we learn about that, it's it's super, super exciting. And um, I, the future the future for Amiga is bright, guys. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. Cheers. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. It was a pleasure having you on. Um, I got some lemmings to play. And speaking of news, I got this uh, demo of a new game out of Italy I'm going to try using Eroc Scorpion Engine. That would be enough. Hey, that's a great article too. The Scorpion Engine. Nice. Eroc's yeah, been wor working hard on that, and there's some really cool stuff uh, coming out as well. There's so many cool things to do articles about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well for, for, oh, sorry. You go. The, 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 we've got the news section in the magazine, and I tend to go and gather these these uh, news articles from all over the place. And I'm I'm going into our, our our Discord channel where we store all the news. Like every day, I'm just pasting something new. It's like, oh, here's some new hardware. Here's some new games coming out. And it's like, I I thought that would be the hardest part coming up with monthly news, and it's it just isn't. <laughs> just yeah. So much stuff. It's crazy. It's like, can we fit it all in? Yeah. I, I just saw that new Amiga 1000 motherboard. That's mental. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, man. Yo, Al Anonymous, thank you so much for the resub, Al. I really, really appreciate that, dude. It's Captain John Archer. It's great to see you. Um, and that's... also, also one thing I, I just think we'll mention as well in the magazine, um, we do have advertisers, but also at the bottom there's a lot of discount codes. So if you are trying to buy Amiga products and stuff, there's usually a little Amiga addict discount, and uh, I think that'd be really useful for readers. That's that's another another perk of the magazine. That's really special. Wow, that's that's also the community coming together and the 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 vendors like offering the magazine. Uh, those discounts that's super that's super cool i agree i agree the the media community feels more alive than ever now and in some ways you know i got some people tell me like oh yeah that it feels like 1992 all over again and it kind of does but in some ways in some ways it was better then because the amiga was like new and you were so excited to like see like what what could they do next but in some ways it's better mm -hmm. now because now we have the internet and the internet brings us all together and like i was saying before i had no connection to the amiga community in in europe or around the world back then other than reading the magazines that the the, the computer store supplied and now the internet's brought us all together and for, for me I, i'm having i'm gonna just say i'm i'm honestly i'm having more fun now than i did back then <laughs> like what can i say i'm having more fun now that, that, that's what it comes down to i don't know it's weird but i'm having more fun now i've got so many new friends and i'm i'm enjoying using my media now just as much as i did back then in some ways even more it's pretty it's pretty wild oh yeah for sure for sure Definitely, I mean, yeah uh my memories of the amiga back in the day are just sort of talking with very close friends who also had amigas and things like that whereas now it's like I talk to people, I know people all over the world 
through like Amigos and through the magazine and all that kind of stuff. I know people everywhere <laughs> with Amigos. Um, and I, I almost think it's like, right, if I'm going on holiday, which people do I know in this country? <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy it, it, just be, be able to reach out to all those people. And and actually, because a lot, a lot of the time, especially if you, you've got a hobby like as a lot of people you can talk to and they will kind of glaze over or not have any clue what you're talking about. Whereas the internet allows you to, to actually speak to people who have the same passion for the things that you do um, and just really enjoy it in that way. Can. And back in the days, you'd meet someone who was into Amiga and you were like, right, I'm going to hang around with this person forever <laughs> and just chat to them because it was rare to find an Amiga. But now you can just uh, go onto a forum or, or meet in a group and you're just like, yeah there we go yeah it's funny friends it's so true it connects us uh and we, we you, you instantly have that bond you know like it's it's uh because the amiga is a computer with a soul and it just connects people right away like if, if i know if i meet someone else who uses amiga like i immediately have all these assumptions about them it just brings us together like right away you know <laughs> you have that, that common mm -hmm. uh mentality yeah amiga community is uh is back then it was just pirating games now it's, it's community yo sep lemon amiga have a great night sep and thank you for all your support you rock dude um yeah, that's uh, so many people sharing some some great memories. Ravi does have a great voice, Captain. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Amiga love. <laughs> <laughs> today today is the day for Amiga love, man. Today is Valentine's Day. All right, gents. Well, that was a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Congratulations on the magazine. I I can't wait to like really like dig into it now, uh, especially issue number two. I haven't uh, seen that one yet. I'm super stoked for the magazine. I'm I'm blown away by it. And uh, thank you guys for your not just coming on today, but most importantly, thank you for your extremely hard work on this magazine. It's paying off in, in dividends because it's, it's exceeded all my expectations. And like everyone who has an Amiga should have this magazine. It's so good. Long, long may it continue. Yes, yeah. exactly. Thanks for all your help and enjoy issue two. Cheers. <laughs> all right, guys, take care. I'll see you. I'll see you guys online. Thank you so much. See you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. That was freaking awesome. I hope you all enjoyed that. More beer. Yeah, that was uh, that was super fun. I, I am really blown away by this magazine. Uh, it's it's super, super cool. It's like <laughs> crazy. I, I hope you guys like the interview. The stream's not over yet. I'm going to plug this Amiga back in. We're going to play some Lemmings. Uh, the interview is great. Oh, okay, thanks, guys. I need to like brush up my interviewing skills, you know. Um, 4.07 p.m. You're welcome, Mogs. You're, and welcome to the team, the Amiga Addict team. It was an amazing interview. Thanks, guys. I'm going to cut it down. In the Pro Arcade, I saw your comment. I don't use the DS. This, the camera you're looking at here is actually a video camera. It's a Canon C300. And overhead camera is a DSLR. Overhead camera is a, is a Canon 5D Mark III. So, yeah. I'm going to... Um, so, we're, we're going to check out this demo of this new game uh, coming out of Italy. And we're going to play some Lemmings. I'm not sure how much time I'll have after that. But because there's so much Amiga news, I might just save it for next week. But um, we'll see. We'll see what y'all want to do. I'm going to... Um... I'm also got another... Here's a little piece of Amiga news for y'all. I'm working on a video. Uh, I'm working really hard on a short video about this build. Uh, what you're seeing here is a Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm super into it. So next week, my plan, besides the Amiga news, I want to play games like on this Raspberry Pi 4 that I can't play on my real Amiga. Like I want to do some Alien Breed 3D, like high frame rate, some breathless stuff. You know, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be cool. Thank oh, Witching Wolf, you're too kind, man. You just ordered 12 months, Ariary. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Jiro. Uh, Edvin, thank you for the kind words, man. I appreciate that. Mogs, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, hearing your memories as well, for sure. Um, so I still have I still have McGeezer's face up there. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Oh, I'm not going to adjust my monitor settings. Abort. I'm going to switch over here. I'm going to play a demo for you all. Yo, Chesh. Chess. Stuart Johnson, thank you for the 100 bits. Oh, Stuart, I'm sorry. I missed your 100 bits before. Uh, where's my overhead cam? Um... This is, so this is, yeah, this is the, this baby I've been working on. This is the case that Stuart Johnson gave me. I got the keyboard from Amiga on the Lake, Kipper 2K. I got to turn off the sleep mode. And there's a Raspberry Pi 4 in there and some some uh, LED lights from Amazon. So I'm going to play, uh, let's see, Raspberry Pi. Um, 
Raspberry Pi 4. I'm gonna I'm gonna play a demo for you guys while I uh, take a quick break and get myself some Polish Pivo. <laughs> and uh, I got about another hour and a half, a little less than an hour and a half of the stream, and then I gotta go pick up uh, my my better half. She's selling chocolates, and uh, I'm gonna go pick her up. Uh, Milo. Oh, it's not. No, it's not a single LED. Oh, a single LED in my PC tower. It's a single LED strip. It's one strip of multiple LED lights. Uh, let's see, which I play. Um, what's a good one here? Uh, should we do another Black Lotus? Sure, like why not? Let's do. Um, did we do Ocean Machine last week, or we did Sil Star? Star we'll do Ocean Machine. You want some elude? I gotta choose it fast. <laughs> We'll do elude. Um, oh, I, oh, here we go. I'll tell you what. We'll play the demo. We'll play the demo that uh, I, the, I took the music from. It's Chaser's music from elude. I took I took the music for Club Amiga Bill. Uh, we'll play we'll play uh, Lorem Ipsum. I'll be right back, folks. It takes a second for the demo to load.
I freaking love that demo. It's so good. It's so good. Yo, uh, Chakraski, you live in... Yeah, I'm drinking the, the Tiski beer. Uh, you live next to the brewery. That's amazing. It's so good, right? I never met... I never met Tim Jennison. Yo, everyone, thanks so much for hanging out today. Um, the stream ain't over yet. I just want to say cheers. Thank you all for hanging out. I uh, hope you all having a great Valentine's Day with lots of Amiga love. <laughs> um, what's up, Baltz? Great to see you. Nivrig, thank you so much for the resub, Nivrig. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it's uh, really appreciate that. Let me reboot. I got to reboot. Um, you're doing good. Thank you. Thank you. I had to put the Amiga Love logo down there in the corner today because, you know, it's Valentine's Day. So cheers, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out today. Really appreciate you coming here every Sunday. I I do these streams because I know I get so much good feedback from you and everyone's having such a great time. And I love hanging out with y'all. That's the main thing. So cheers, everyone. Nostrovier, Skull, Stolot, Prost. Thank you all for being here. In a pro arcade, that picture you took last week was amazing. I love it. Oh wait, I think you put a new one up, right? Let me put on a little music, and we're gonna play. We're gonna play a demo of a new Ami game. Then we gotta play a little Lemmings. Thank you, Bolts. Hey, I'm a big retro fan. <laughs> I love all retro. You know, Amiga is obviously you know my favorite, but I just love all things. Uh, I just love all things uh, retro. I appreciate history. I love to keep history alive. I want to uh, keep keep the history alive. Pass it on to the next generation. You know. I grew up in the 80s mostly and 90s too, and uh, there's so much cool stuff. And physical media is so important. That's why I love Amiga Act Magazine as well. Uh, you know, Mitsulu. I think Mitsulu is here. We can we can shout a little Mitsulu. He's one of my my, my awesome viewers. Um, he's got a, he just dropped Drive. He just dropped this new this new uh, track into my Discord. I don't know if he's still here. He he makes some really nice cinematic music. Um, you you you'll take a drone shot of Summerhill Pyramid Winery when the weather warms up. Oh, yo! So, um, Milo, that wine was fantastic. Thank you so much for the wine. Uh, my wife and I we drank half the bottle last night. We're gonna finish it tonight for Valentine's Day. So, thank you, Milo. That's super super kind of you. Nal Paul, thank you for the Amiga love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is really good beer. Tonda, what's up, Tonda? Tonda, it's great to have you, Tonda. Tonda, you said some really nice things about me on your stream, man. I really, really appreciate it. So everyone, go give Tonda a follow. He's a super nice guy, friend of Ash that High as well. Uh, great streamer here on Twitch. He's a key member of like the retro community. I feel like like the retro directory here on Twitch is it's got a community as well. He's the nicest guy. Uh, really great streamer. He's got a great voice too, much better than mine. <laughs> I, I I wish I it, it'd be easier for me to shout out. It's so hard. It's so hard to let's see. Boom. Control copy. We'll shout you out, Tonda. <laughs> Thank you, Captain John. Thank you, sir. Captain John for the win. Thank you, Tonda. So this is Mitsalu's music. Uh, it's a, a new track he just dropped called uh, called Drive, and you can find me, uh, his music at indiegamemusic.com. And he he's got music for PC, music for Amiga. These are Amiga mods. I love it. This is a nice one, and they're they're very cinematic and very moody. Tonda, of course, dude. Yeah, in a pro arcade. Oh, in a pro arcade. Are you in Team Sanctuary too? I forgot. That's right. I'm on Ash's team with Tonda. Team Sanctuary. I love it. You are excellent in a pro arcade. In a pro, I wish. I wish. Um, I, I'm gonna stay up late. I'm gonna stay up late a couple times so I can make sure I can catch your streams. I've seen the replays and they're awesome. But, <laughs> but uh, you you start streaming like midnight my time and uh, Amiga Bill Amiga Bill goes to bed early. When the sun sets, Amiga Bill sets, and when the sun rises, Amiga Bill rises. <laughs> um, all right, so I want to go over here to the Amiga news section. Like I said there's too much news. I'm not going to be able to do it all today. Um, but let me get this piece of news. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Amiga News with Amiga Bill. So much Amiga News. Uh, it's hard to keep up with. Yo, Bolt Spans, thank you for stopping by, man. You have a nice day, too. I, I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Um. 
So Indie Retro News posted this article um, last week, I think it was. A new Commodore Amiga platformer is coming from Nesso Games. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. He put me in the article. That's cool. I Amiga Bill said to me the other day with a chuckle that yesterday's news is old news already. And yes, when it comes to the Amiga mentions throughout the year so far, I completely agree with him. Well, anyway, here's a new game which looks like it could be fun when it gets an eventual release on the Commodore Amiga. It's Nesso Games' upcoming platformer, which is being developed using Erox Scorpion Engine. Although we currently don't have a name for this new game, we'll update the article when we find out. But from the video above, or link here sent to us by Pearl Ola, it's a charming little platformer that will feature lovely background details, smooth scrolling, coin collection, different enemies, and multiple areas. The only thing we hope that will change is the music is a little repetitive. Oh, it's just a demo. That's cool. So I'm super psyched. So Neil from Indie Retro News got me a demo of this game and to play on the stream for you guys. So it's a very short demo. I'll play this demo really quick. Uh, it'll be cool. Edvin, that's, that's hilarious. I, I, I would be sleeping a lot in Norway. It's funny because I was doing a job in Alaska in the summertime and I slept like two hours a night. It's crazy. <laughs> Knock to Brizo, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. If you're new to my streams, Knock, uh, I'm Bill, and I stream Amiga stuff here every Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Oh, 7 p.m. UTC, 8 p.m. Central European time. I do Amiga stuff. I play classic Amiga games. I play new Amiga games. I do a lot of Amiga news. And my favorite thing to do is have guests on, uh, like I did today. There's so many cool things happening in the Amiga community that I love to interview people about their projects. And Amiga Act Magazine, man, it's a super good one. I think this will be a really good one for Amiga Sons. Notice also, I, I did an upgrade in the newsroom. I, cause I, you know, Indie Retro News, I take so much of my news from Indie Retro News, I just want to give them like a little bump, you know? So I put the, I put Indie Retro News there under the TV. I put their logo there just to show a little appreciation for all the hard work that they do with the, the news. And then I covered up the, uh, the Cinemaware logo with the Boing Ball, cause I love to wear Boing Ball paraphernalia, so it's much more appropriate now. <laughs> I, I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit of an Amiga fan and a pro a bit. <laughs> now I forget I I think this is an ADF that I have. I think it's an ADF. Oh, the music stops when I go to the menu. Interesting. All right. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's an ADF. Let's see. Yep, it's an ADF. Boom. And we'll reset. So this is using uh, Eroc Scorpion Engine. Eroc uh, was in the stream before. I'm not sure if he's still here. <laughs> Can I say, uh, I, I, you know what, in Pred Zeta, I might have to go back to class just to remember how to pronounce it. I'm gonna have a new pronunciation. I have a new class coming up next week, by the way, Fred Seda. I think I might take a break. I've had three weeks of guests on in a row, which has been awesome. It's my favorite thing to do. But next week, I might just, I might just play some games, you know, and and do the Amiga news. Let me wait. Hold on. Let me, let me just see if I. Find it's pronounced Rabenstein. 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 There you go, Fred Seda. There you go. <laughs> nice, Iraq is still here. Rabenstein. I got I'm going to learn a new word next week. Okay, so A is interact and pick up and B is jump. Now that's that is uh joystick Button A and joystick button B. Node Pond, you love it already? Nice. Yo, wait, Node, Node Pond, were you, are you like, wait, you just became a patron of mine, right? I, I thanked you at the beginning, man. I appreciate it. Um, that's very, very kind of you. This game does look adorable. I love the graphics. The color palette is awesome. This is so cool. Like, so you can go inside the house. Node Pond. Yeah, thank you, Node Pond. I got you in my Patreon credits now. I really appreciate you. Thank you. 
So you can go inside the house. I don't think that you can actually do anything in the house yet. Again, this is just a very early demo that Neil was able to uh, to get for me from the developer, which is super cool. Um, but I'm, I'm loving the game already. I love how you can, it's got elements that you can go into. It adds a whole, a whole new layer of sophistication to the game. It's very, very cool. The background is really rad too. So let's see, can we jump up here? Yep, we got, get some coins, love it. Now, it sure, I see that, it sure looks like that fairy is gonna be something you can interact with in the not too distant future. Maybe for now she's just, I guess she's just like a, she's just background decoration for now, but I, I've got a hunch you'll be able to interact with her. This is just a very early demo. Yeah, what creature is the main, he looks kinda like, I don't know, it's a good question. I was gonna say egg as well. He looks like an egg. Like he looks like a young hum Humpty Dumpty, you know? <laughs> can I open that? Oh, oh, I can pick up that box. Can I throw it? Maybe I need to bring the box home? A toadstool? Evolve Dizzy, hilarious. Again, guys, this is a very, very early, early beta version of this game. So it's just an idea to show you, you know, the concept of like what they're working on. I'll oh, see. I gotta go pick the, up the coins again. But the, and it's also a good idea to uh, a good way to check out the Scorpion engine. Yeah, Pred Seda. Pred Seda is hoping this game is gonna develop into something mighty. The graphics are awesome, and Scorpion is already mighty. Fingers crossed for this game. I I agree. I wonder if I can put the box in the water. Hmm. Interesting. And Pred Seda, thank you for. I was gonna play some Nitro today, but I'm gonna do that next week. I was gonna play Nitro for the the EAB um, English Amiga Board and Lemon Amiga competition, and I do, I've played it. I've got a score. It's a low score, and I, I watched some videos on the game, and I think I, I can definitely increase the score. I mean, I definitely can, because uh, my score is pretty bad. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll post it anyway for now, and then I'll play Nitro next week. It's a great start so far. They're off to a great start. Agreed, Tonda. Yeah, this game does not have a name yet. Is from Nesso, a company in Italy. Oh, Oram, Oram. <laughs> Whoops. I'll try not to beat you, Oram. It's not very good. It, like when I saw the scores posted, I was like, "What the heck is going on here?" Because their scores were so much higher than mine. Oh, you can pay five. Okay, so I just read that sign. It says you can pay five coins for one extra life. I don't know how to pay. I don't know how to pay. It made that's not implemented yet. Um, but apparently, like, I was trying to win the races, and I was winning the races, but apparently, like, getting all those power-ups is more important than winning the race. Oh, uh, Pred Seda says everyone uh, who submits his or her score has already won. Good point, Pred Seda. Anyway, this game looks super cool. I think that's it for the demo. Yeah, again, it's just it's just a quick demo. Iraq. Iraq, the Scorpion engine is looking is looking great. I'm guessing that that vending machine up there will be a vending machine where you can purchase like power ups or something. Once I learn the tracks, I get better at. It. That's the problem, uh, Oram. Is like I don't <laughs> I don't have time to like really get good at games because a lot of a lot of getting good at games requires memorization, and I, I'm too busy getting ready for streams and making YouTube videos. <laughs> Speaking of YouTube videos. There is a, a new a new Guru Meditation YouTube video coming out this week all about this computer right here. Oh, I think someone asked me how much it costs to put this together just as I was leaving for my break. Um, so the case, well, the case normally costs $100, but I was super lucky and Stuart Johnson gifted it to me. So, but let's just call it $100 um, for the case, $200 for the keyboard, so that's $300, and then the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, which is probably about eighty dollars. Eighty. Well, I'll call it a hundred dollars with all the, the bells and whistles. So, to, so four hundred dollars for this this system. Dude, Stuart Johnson's the best. I freaking love that guy. Now, now, um, Muppet Nall. I don't think it'll be the full game. <laughs> it looks like a great demo, right? That's what you'll purchase. You want for five coins? Oh, that makes sense. Yes, in a pro arcade. So that sign probably just told you you can purchase the extra player. Yep, and then you actually purchase it in there. Good good point, Infra Arcade. Agreed. Thank you, George. 
Anyway, the game looks awesome. Oh, I think I, I think I just did. Did I just pick? It just it worked. I just. I, oh, I see. You have to keep clicking. Every time you click, it inserts a coin into the vending machine. That's what it is. You don't press just once. Every. Got it. Okay, but it only gives you it only gives you one extra life. Cause I just spent I just jumped I just dropped a whole bunch of coin into that machine and <laughs> when they make a pie case molded off an eighty six hundred you're there. Oh yeah, so this actually this case isn't actually for the Raspberry Pi. This is for a real Amiga, but it's got mounting ports for a Raspberry Pi. This one is really cool too. I love this is this is the case I used for years. This is a three D printed little Amiga. Uh, Amiga 500 case for the Pi. This is a very valid way to do it as well, and it, it's the cheapest way to do it. But you know, but having an actual Amiga case with a Pi in it definitely brings back that retro experience, you know, perfectly. Captain John says the Scorpion engine is so impressive. I bow to Iraq for his coding skills. All right, how much time do we have left here? It's 4:30. Oh, I got an hour. So do you guys want to do a little Amiga news and then play Lemmings, or should I just play Lemmings? Maybe I'll catch up on a, maybe I'll, I'll do a little Amiga news and catch up on it, you know. News? All right, yeah, I'll do some news. We'll do a little news and then um I'll I'll do it maybe I'll do 30 minutes of Amiga news and then I'll do 30 minutes of Lemmings. I mean, it, it is Lemmings 30th birthday, so I got to play Lemmings, you know what I'm saying? Pred Seda, no, I haven't tried the, the new Tiniest demo. That Should I do it? What's up, Dino? Dude, Dino, great to see you, Dino. Dino Hatazi, creator of the Greek stick, my man. Um, I just saw it was released today, but it was released uh, while I was getting ready for the stream. I should play it, because I, I tried to play it last time, and I couldn't. Um, I, I used I was using like the emulator. I wasn't ready for it. How much how much is different, uh, Pred Seda? Is it worth downloading? Which we listen to. We were talking about jungle before. Need some drum and bass. I think Pred Seda wants me to play some Tiny S. I'm not going to argue with that. I'll download it. What's up, Microfine? Great to see you, Microfine. All right, I got, I got it, I got it, Pred Seda. Mupp and all, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it very, very much. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're enjoying yourself, having a great day. Um, we are, we're about to do a little Amiga news. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll play, maybe I'll play Tiny Us. It's so good. The problem is, if I start playing Tiny Us, I, it's just gonna, I'm not gonna get to any news. It's so good. I played the the first beta. It was amazing. <laughs> I can't get enough of that picture. I gotta be honest. There's no there's no final version of of uh, of uh, Tiny Us yet. Oh, but the other ones, Tiny Invaders and uh, Tiny Galaga. Dude, I love Tiny Galaga so much. So I'll do a couple of quick pieces of news first. Here's a quick one. Vintage Computer Festival East, which is the, the festival that I participate in every year, has been rescheduled. Normally it happens in the spring, and it's been rescheduled for um, October. So VCF East rescheduled for October 8th, 9th, 9th, and 10th of 2021, pending, pending that it will be safe. So. They're planning on doing a show in person, but it will be uh, rescheduled. You know, th well, it's they're planning on doing a, a show in person on the eighth and ninth and tenth, but you know, we'll see. We'll see the COVID situation at the time. So VCF East rescheduled. There's the link. I'm gonna go through some of the news pretty quick. Here's a good one. 
my man Wayne Ashworth. He's such a good guy. I love Wayne Ashworth. Um, this is a really special one, folks. Game Shot, a darts game is coming to your Amiga from Wayne Ashworth. We feature many games on Indie Retro News from platformers to shooters and from adventure games to puzzlers, but one particular genre we don't feature very much of are sports games. Well, Wayne Ashworth certainly has you covered. At some point after the release of Scourge the Underkind, he will be releasing his work in progress of a game, Game Shot, a brand new darts game coming to an Amiga near you in the near future. I, I, I tell you what, I love playing real darts, so this game is, is, is going to be super, super cool. But the thing I love about this game, Wayne is a great guy. He's been on the stream before. He's been a guest on the stream. He's a super great guy, and he's had some serious health issues. And this game is dedicated to his dad, who passed away. So uh, this game is a, a really special one, and I hope he finishes it. I hope it comes out. It looks super cool. Wayne Ashworth has had a real tough time of it lately. Um, as the story behind his latest creation tells us a uh, small part of it. In the words of Wayne, after my dad passed away at the end of 2018, and after I nearly died myself just days later, DVT and multiple pulmonary emboli, I decided to take some much needed time out from Scourge of the Underkind development to channel some of my energy into a little tribute game for my father. And so this darts game, Game Shot, was born. So there you have it. After everything Wayne has done and gone through, it's nice to see him still creating games, and we look forward to Scourge of the Underkind. If you're not familiar with Scourge of the Underkind, it's going to be like a triple-A release. Wayne is doing all the graphics for it, and Magnus, I think, is doing the coding. And it, Scourge is going to be like one of the top new Amiga games to come out. But I'm just so, you know, this is really great for Wayne, because, like like Indie Veteran who said, he, he literally, I guess, no joke, like he literally almost passed away recently and his dad did pass away in 2018 so it's just it's just wonderful to see to see Wayne you know getting this game out well working on this game a tribute to his dad I'm not gonna play the whole video it's it's like 10 minutes long but look at that how cool is that <laughs> thank you thank you Wayne for putting me on the high score hall of fame thank you <laughs> that was a really crazy surprise thank you Wayne you rock dude um and here's the, here's a little peek of the darts game it looks awesome Jiro says we need darts games yeah exactly Pixels at Dawn Gaming, that's cool, we love, we love dark games. Yo, Pixels at Dawn, I really enjoyed hanging out with you, man. Thank you so much for coming on the stream. I hope you had fun on the interview. So, here's a little fun fact. I play darts every Friday. My neighbors and I get together. I, ever since the lockdown, my neighbors and I have been getting together, and we drink beers, we drink whiskey, and we play darts every Friday night. Um, because we can't go to, we don't, you know, before we can, I guess we can go to bars now, but we weren't able to before that, so five of us get together and we play darts and drink whiskey every Friday night. It's a really good time. I'm glad it's on Friday night because I'm kind of useless on Saturday after Friday night. <laughs> Maybe I can find a picture of us playing darts. I don't know, it's cool. But yeah, Wayne Ashworth, congratulations, Wayne, and I'm looking forward to your darts game. I love darts and I love Wayne Ashworth, so, I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Oh, Rom, it's safe. No, we, it, the only thing we hit is the wooden wall. The, the only thing we hit is the wooden wall. I mean, drinking and darts go hand in hand, you know? It's like it's like bagels and locks. Um, I'll do this really quick. Um, dude, we're going to get through this news. This is going to be great. So, you know, I played Space Invaders Amiga, and it's got a new update. So it looks even better now. I, I, I love this. the Space Invaders Amiga is super cool and he enhanced the graphics so it looks like the Space Invaders with that overlay in the arcade it looks sweet I the Space Invaders is such a classic game I freaking I love it and so the idea of this is not to like make a new Space Invader game it's, it's to um, make like an arcade perfect Space Invaders for the Amiga it looks super cool what's up Echoes B Edvin, you've got a dartboard and nowhere to put it. Edvin, it was really great seeing you in that Amiga Attic magazine, by the way. You can you can get creative with it, Edvin. Maybe I'll find a picture of us playing darts. In a pro arcade, has been playing the Space Invaders all week. It's fantastic. My five-year-old, who has access to modern systems, likes it more than recent games. How about that? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised, Interpro, because a good game is a good game. And, and I'm telling you... Some of the older games are probably great for kids because, you know, you don't need, like, four buttons and analog sticks and just select and start and all that crap. It's just, like, left, right, fire. I mean, come on. That's all you need. You <laughs> know, left, right, and fire. That's all you need. Oh, yeah, you did a light one last night, Pixels? Nice, dude. 
Space Invaders Amiga. Again, all these links will be in the Amiga Bill goodie bag for y'all. This one just came out. A family-friendly owl game coming to an Amiga near you. I didn't even read this article yet. Erox Scorpion Engine. Oh, cool! It's another Scorpion Engine game. Oh, I love it. Erox is getting some some play with that Scorpion Engine. Erox Scorpion Engine is certainly the next big thing for the Amiga creation, as we've already featured a number of decent-looking games, such as Creeping Me Out, Hex Knight, Pitfall 2, and even Nesso Games as of yet unnamed platformer, which we just played. Well, anyway, here we are with another Scorpion Engine game developed as per all show us. This week, oh, so work in progress from Charne. Yo, Charne is in the chat all the time. Yeah, he's one of my best viewers, man. Charne, awesome dude. Yo, Johnny Nitro. Thank you for the follow, Johnny Nitro. Oh, wait, did I miss? Um, MPN Atal, thank you for the follow. And Johnny Nitro, thank you so much for the follow. And 3D Code Warrior, thank you so much for the resub. Almost two years of amazing Amiga stuff by Bill. Thank you, 3D Code Warrior. I hope you enjoy the goodie bags and you find um, your your time here valuable. So Charney is working on a new game with an owl. I love it. In a pro arcade, thank you for gifting a sub to Milo Loves Chocolate. In dude, thank you, In a pro arcade. You're amazing. Appreciate you very much, dude. Charney is in the chat a lot. Charney is here. Uh, oh my gosh, this looks awesome. For the folks like like um, like Johnny Nitro, I love your name, Johnny Nitro. For folks like Johnny Nitro, who just followed. Welcome to the stream. I'm Bill, and I stream Amiga stuff here every Sunday on Twitch, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. UTC, 8 p.m. Central European time. And I play classic games. I play new Amiga games. I'll be playing this one for sure. And the Amiga community that comes here is amazing. I get surrounded by so many cool people who are making new games. I get people who are making new Amiga magazines. That's my favorite thing to do on these streams is to interview folks in the community. Today we had Ravi Abbott and Pixels at Dawn Gaming on uh, talking about a new Amiga magazine called Amiga Addict. It's already up to like 1,800 copies a month. It's amazing, dude. So um, yeah, interviews, playing classic games, playing new games, and doing Amiga news. That's what we do here every Sunday. Sunday fun day. So welcome, and thank you for the follows. Yo, Jim. Jim, thank you for hanging out, brother. It's great to see you, Jim. <laughs> my man, Jim, thank you. It's great. Give my best to, to Sarah and the family, Jim. Jim, we gotta, we gotta get we gotta get your kids playing some Amiga. In a pro arcade, you're too kind. Sunday's the best day of the week because Amiga Bill's here entertaining us, bringing us the geek stuff, interviews, demos, games. I mean, in some ways, Bill's better than an Amiga magazine. I love this channel and all of you. Aw, oh, you're too kind. Milo's Chocolate, I'll come rub your belly anytime. Anything for my VIPs. Well, almost anything. Belly rubs are, are acceptable. <laughs> they're borderline, but they're acceptable. <laughs> I try, I try, I try and make the streams good for y'all. I, I do, I try hard on the streams. I have to keep improving myself every week. I, I need to, I try and get better every week for you. Another great news site is my friend Michael, who pops into these streams as well. He's the creator of Amitopia Magazine. And there are updated DSP 3210 drivers and tools for AA Amiga 3000s and Amiga 3000s Plus are out. So it's amazing that they're updating new drivers and tools for the Amiga 3000. Um, a lot of folks are saying that these drivers are is what the Amiga 3000 should have been. And this is super exciting for all Amiga 3000 owners. I haven't delved into all the details of uh, what happened with this driver update. I just know a lot of folks are saying that this is this is like what the Amiga 3000 should have been. So there, these are like major, major uh, upgrades for the Amiga 3000. So I'm going to link you to Michael's article in Amitopia Magazine about the updated DSP 3210. Oh yeah, and it does. Oram, I think Oram is right. It's got a, a prototype chip. It's talking uh, right here. Um, it, they tell a really great story here that was done, that's from the, the Amiga Book of Big Hardware. Jeff Porter, one of the original Amiga engineers, uh, tells a story about a prototype chip, and apparently Oram is saying that the, 
the new drivers and tools uh, had this prototype chip that they were going to put into the 3000 but never did. That's amazing. Dude, I'm passionate, dude. I'm passionate in a pro. 3D Code Warrior, you rock, my man. Fred Seda, Lemon Amiga, exclamation mark lemon in the chat. Get your fresh squeezed lemon goodness at lemonamiga.com. Loves how the Scorpion engine evolved. I mean, two years ago, if a game appeared and was made in Backbone, everyone was like, boo! But now if a game appears and it's made in Scorpion, everyone's like, hell yeah. Freaking E-Rock in the house. Making this your Sunday tradition has got you hooked on Amiga for life. Milo, I, dude, I really appreciate your support so much, man. You, you really... You really mean a lot to me, man. I really appreciate you so very, very much. I, I mean that. Thank you, Michael from Amitopia. I, I need to dig into that article as well. All right, here we go. Dude, we're getting through it. We're getting through it. We're almost done with the news, and then we'll, we'll play some Lemmings, and maybe you know, I'll I'll play I'll play a little of the uh, Tiny S as well. The A. 1100 project give a second chance to your broken Amiga 1000 this is absolutely amazing it's a new motherboard for the Amiga 1000 Knopf Wolf thank you so much for the follow Knopf Wolf I appreciate it very much welcome to the stream I hope you're ready for some Amiga goodness I, you know I forgot to change I forgot to change the thing in my, my, my title for on Twitch I changed it on Twitter and Facebook but I'm gonna play some Lemmings today is, today is the 30th birthday of Lemmings classic game anyway Give your give a second chance to your broken Amiga 1000. How amazing is this? A brand new Amiga 1000 motherboard? This is crazy. So if your um, if your Amiga motherboard is is Amiga 1000 motherboard is broken, you can replace it with this one. What do you need? And what, what so um, some old components are not easily available. Mostly custom chips from Commodore. Okay, so you need to repopulate some of the board. But it's just so cool. Like, let's pretend your your uh, your Amiga 1000 motherboard is damaged. You can now get a, a replacement for it. It's freaking cool. It, it, FX GoGo, -Go, it is absolutely incredible. Agreed. And I see this is on Aranet website. I don't know what Edu has to do with this, but I'm sure I'm sure he's behind something. <laughs> that Edu is amazing. The Amiga 1000 case is the best looking Amiga. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the classic of the classic. Mr. Linus, I'm well. I'm well. Edvin Helen said this is an awesome project. I agree. In a pro arcade, was a Commodore 64 person when he was a teenager. He only got an Amiga to help develop I Have the, Behold I Have the Beholder 1 and 2. And you played tons of console stuff. No PC games. But I'm responsible for you not only becoming a massive Amiga fan, but also inspiring you to get back into Amiga development. I've got a lot of thanking to do with Bill. The entire family has passion now for the Amiga. Can you believe that in 2021? Oh, dude, thank you so much, Interpro Arcade. Interpro Arcade, I need to get you on the on the show as well. The the truth is, you know, I I mean, um, I I I I haven't gotten deep into Westwood games back then. You know, like I Beholder, I always knew it was a classic, but I was I'm not an expert with I the Beholder, so I felt like I want to educate myself a little bit more. But I would love to have you on. I mean that that would be amazing. If you if you want to come on, it would be it'd be fantastic. I am Leg wants an Amiga 1000 so he can try out the the A11 the A1100 project. It's hilarious. Tiny Us, an arcade quality Amiga OCS port of Gradius Nemesis gets a beta release. We just read some brilliant news via the EAB forums. If you've got an Amiga or emulator at hand, and if you've played Pink Abyss's previous Amiga version of Tiny Invaders, Tiny Galaga, and Tiny Bobble, then as of right now, you can play the latest beta version of his work in progress, an arcade conversion of Gradius Nemesis, a side-scrolling shoot-em-up that was originally released as a Japanese coin-op way back in 1986. I want to play it so bad. Prince Phase 101, thank you so much for the raid. I appreciate that very, very much. 32 bits, thank you for the kind words, man. I appreciate that very, very much. Prince Phase, I hope you're doing great. Thank you so much for the raid. Thank you so much for the host. We're just finishing up some Amiga news. What time is it? 4.48. I'm going to see if this new version of Tiniest will boot up. We'll make, I'll play like five minutes of Tiniest, and then we'll play a little Lemmings, and then I'll call the stream. I need to end the stream in 30 minutes.
But thank you so much for the raid. I hope you had a great a great raid. I mean, a great stream, uh, Prince Phase 101. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you're just joining the stream, you're going to want to catch the VOD. You're going to want to catch the VOD because we had Ravi Abbott and Pixel at Dawn Gaming on, and they were talking about the new Amiga Attic magazine, which is incredible. All right, I'm going to grab this. Uh, copy. Next week, I'm going to play a bunch of games that require, like, 060, so I'm going to play Breathless, some, like, first-person shooters. I'm going to get pretty hardcore, not hardcore, but hardcore <laughs> with the gaming next week because I've, I've been so lucky. I've had, like, three weeks in a row of amazing guests. So I just kind of want to, you know, shift gears a little bit and really, like, really game next weekend. Oh, I ha Oh, NG platformer. Sorry. Tiniest beta. That's what I want to do. Tiniest beta. Copy. Paste. Andy Amiga 7, what is up, dude? Great to see you, Andy. Get the <laughs> shiny keyboard. So, folks, um, I'm going to release a new video on YouTube this week. If you do exclamation mark guru in the chat, and it's all about building this Amiga. This this is a Raspberry Pi Amiga that I'm, I'm using right here. So this actually, it looks like a real Amiga, but it's not. It's um, it's actually a Raspberry Pi in there, and it's super cool. I, I, I mean, I love real Amigas the most, but I can do things with this Amiga that I can't do with my real one because my real one's not fast enough. So uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I'll probably do like next week. I'll do one more stream with this one. Then I'll get my I'll put my real Amiga back in the mix. All right, so that's good. Let's eject this. Uh, I'm I'm happy you're here, Andy. Very happy you're here, Andy. You'll definitely want to catch the vod. So uh, what did I do? Did I do a quick start here? I think I did a quick start. Um, let's see. Pred Sata, you're going to wait a little while. <laughs> Hardcore gaming next week, Pixel is on. Oh, I blew it. I gotta. I'm still learning. I'm still learning this Amibian stuff. Yeah, Edvin, that's a great, a great point. I should try the Heart of Darkness port on the Amiga. That's a really good one. I don't. You know, it's so funny because I haven't uh, installed the RTG. It's like uh, getting Heart of Darkness to work is hard. <laughs> I was able to get it work on on Win UAE. Through the help, of, I think it was Damien D's uh, build on English Amiga board, but I, I don't know if I can actually get it working. But that would that would be a great one. Um, all right. I hope this works. Let's see. It's interesting because when I, when I run it and I give me a four thousand mode, it, it can't handle it. I don't. It's just with the emulator. UAE is the best emulation platform we've ever used. Win UAE is incredible. I agree. Yes, yes, yes. We got it, folks. This is actually Amiberry. So this is Amibian, which is a distro of Amiberry. All right, so let me do, hold on. Let me, I want to get you guys some full screen action here. I'm just, let me just do my cropping. Almost there. I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> right is going to be 450. Close.
And bottom's going to be like a good 75. Close. 100. I'm so excited too because like last week I, I tried it for a couple seconds and the second button wasn't set up and it was bad news but I'm ready to go here folks. I'm ready to freaking go. Dude, I'm so excited that this is going to work. <laughs> well, I don't want to jinx it but let's freaking go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we rocking and rolling. Oh, I, I cropped the bottom. Can I pause it? Oh, it's got a pause feature. I cropped too much on the bottom. Uh, t -t 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 transform, edit. Sorry, folks, the bad cropping there. That should be close enough. Ozentech, thank you so much for the follow, Ozentech, and welcome to the stream. We are trying out a brand new demo of of a, a port of Gradius for the Amiga called Tinyus. It's so cool that you can use the second button to power up. There we go. Oh, the music is so good. This is amazing, folks. These tiny guys are ridiculous, man. They're so... Dude, I love Tiny Galaga so much. Look out, look out. Look out, that little rascal up there is trying to get me. He ain't gonna, no, he ain't gonna get me. I need, I need some power-ups. Let's go get, hit the gold guys for the power-up. Got it, got it. I, the laser is so good. I just want to keep the laser, so... Watch out, you gotta watch out. I, I was living life on the edge there. Look at that, look at that dodge move. Look at that dodge move right there. Boom. You gotta watch out, because those guys come up from behind and get you. They're starting to freak me out. Yes, we got some shields. I need a speed up. I'll take another, I'll take another drone, why not? I need a speed up though. I, I should have got a speed up earlier on. I forgot. I'm, I'm kind of slow. Oh my god, this game is so good. This sounds like a boss fight. The music changes. The colors change. Freaking explosions. Woo. Volcanoes erupting. Oh, let's hit this guy. Let's hit him hard. Where's the hitbox? I don't know. I don't know where the hitbox is, but look out. Oh man, he is tough. That is a tough cookie right there. Oh, and I, I'm, oh, no way. I'm like back to zero? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I, I do laser, laser straight away. I'll take the speed up right now. Bill versus the popcorn machine. <laughs> gimme, give gimme, give oh, that's a tough one to get. Got it. You know what, I'll take the speed up. Am I safe here? I hope I'm safe here. All right, here we go. Now, how do I, where's the hitbox? The game steals all your power-ups together with your life. I know, I know, I know. 
I just went for it there. I, I went for it because I need the power-ups. Oh, this game is wonderful, though. There's no way I'm gonna beat that boss without some power-ups. Let's get, let's get it. I missed it. I can't do anything with this little pea shooter. Now I'm emulating an Amiga 500 here. That's why the slowdown. But I'm sure this will play in my real 1200 battle problem. Laser. Yeah, give me that laser. This is... I agree. This is a gorgeous game. All right. I'm going to go up here in my safe place. I hope the popcorn can't get me here. I think I'm pretty safe here. Whoa. That was a little too close for comfort. All right. Here we go. Let him get one. We blasted away one, two, two more shields to go. One more shield. Shields down. Boom! Good night, boss. Woo! Woo! Oh, this game is good, folks. Oh, man. I love the side strolling shooters. Bring them on. <laughs> Bring them on. That was great. So, I was going to repeat. It's gonna, I'm not going to play it again because I'm still limited with the time. That was awesome. That was awesome. Even even overhead cam can't take it. Even overhead cam can't take it. That was great. Yo, this game is fantastic. I that's freaking awesome. Woo! Kick that demo's butt. You know it, MO Pro Arcade. Alright, we gotta play some lemmings. What time is it? It's 501. It's only appropriate to play some lemmings, right? It's the 30th anniversary of lemmings. I can't wait to read the article about lemmings in, in the Amiga Addicts magazine. It's gonna be great. In a pro arcade, it's so good. It's so good. Thank you, Jiro. Thank you, Jiro. Pro gamer, my man Jiro. I think so. Next week, I'm gonna play. I'll play some Nitro, and we'll see. We'll see what kind of score I can get. I feel like the microphone is like too far away from me today. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, so let's let's play some Lemmings. Yeah, Interpro says Interpro says way to go, Abyss. Abyss is. I mean, seriously, their games are unbelievable. <laughs> so, they're so good. I, I think Tiny Galaga, Tiny Galaga, and this one are probably my two favorites when this one comes out. I just because I love Galaga, you know, love Galaga. Cheers, everyone. I'll, I'll drink to that. I can I'll, I can only have one beer because I have to go drive after the stream. Oh, uh, Pred says uh, next week I can play Nitro, but the last chance to do a score is next. Okay, I need to submit a score. If you're wondering what Pred, Pred Zeta, can you throw uh, that link down and I'll show folks. Pred Zeta is talking about the Lemon EAB Super League, which is super fun games competition. This is round two and Nitro is the second game. The first game was Super Hang On. It was a lot of fun. And Nitro, Nitro is a really fun racing game too. So I, I guess I can try it next weekend, but it won't count. Um, but I'll submit a score before then. Cheers, everyone. All right, so Lemmings. Um, let's... Yo, Kristen, thank you so much for the follow, Kristen. I appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. It's a pleasure to have you here. I hope you're having a great day. I'm having a great day. Uh, today's Valentine's Day. I'm about to go pick up my Valentine. And uh, we we played... Uh, was it? Well, first we interviewed uh, Ravi and Pixels at Dawn Gaming from Amiga Addict Magazine. Freaking... Look at this magazine. It's so good. Amiga Act Magazine. It's a brand new Amiga magazine. It's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, then we played, then we did some Amiga news. Uh, we went through some, um, we played a new demo of an untitled Amiga game from Nesso Games using Erox Scorpion Engine. We just played a new demo of Tiny Us, which is a Gradius port by Abyss. And, and now we're going to play some Lemmings because literally 30 years ago to the day, like to this day, Lemmings came out. You open up streams of demos now because of me nice dude <laughs> uh, I, you know i'm glad i'm glad i inspired people that's what it's all about 
Um, see, I'm sorry, but my, my cat is really hungry. I gotta feed him too. All right, so let's do this. Uh, boom. Let's put some floppies. Do we'll load. Load that up. Go into Amiga 500 mode. I'm gonna I'm gonna play off of ADF. I like playing off ADFs. I mean, WHD load is great, but I kind of digging. I'm kind of digging the the ADFs. I feel like ADFs are the most accurate, but even I'm still emulating, so. I'm and I'm digging I'm digging this new this I got you know I realized there's a there's a an update for Amiberry and uh huge thanks to my man for showing me how to update it. I need to update the Amiberry. Okay, and let's reset. Cuz this is uh and maybe in 1.5 extended edition, but I'm using an older Amiberry. I shouldn't have to reset, right? I need a robot cat feeder. <laughs> totally, Oram. Kristen just ordered a six-month subscription to Amiga Act magazine. Looking forward to it. Kristen, it's, Amiga Act is fantastic. Like I said, it exceeded all my expectations. I love the crack tros. Yeah, I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to change any of that. <laughs> it's noise. What's up, noise? Your cats are anxious to get fed too. Did I not do a lemmings? No, I did a, I did a lemmings. Come on. There we are. Just my lemmings profile. You play ADFs for the Cracktros? I, I agree. If you get tastic, they're fun. They're super fun. Vector Funk, I'm loving Amiberry. It's so good. Let me zoom out here because we need to see some mouse action here. You know what I'm saying? We need to see some mouse action. Lemmings. Lemmies. The anti Oh, should I play the anti lemming demo? I'll play the anti lemming demo one more time too. Oh, the skid row crack has got a good one too? Oh, I gotta check that one out. It's so good. Happy birthday, Lemmings. I mean, one of the greatest games ever made, right? People forget it's an Amiga game. It's so good. The game is absolutely brilliant. It's inspired so many other games. I feel like Worthy, Worthy is like kind of like Lemmings inspired, you know? Uh, even with the characters, but not just the characters, the gameplay as well. Lemmings will always be in your heart, Jiro. Interpro Arcade. I mean, is this not the sex... <laughs> Dude, in a pro, I forget that I'm not at a real Amiga. Like, I'm really into the history and preserving the history and original hardware. Like, I love it, obviously. Um, but this thing is so cool. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. It's so cool. Kristen is the first game you ever played as a kid. Oh, sorry. Not, not Kristen. Crichton. I'm sorry. Crichton. I'm not even gonna pronounce. I'm not even gonna try the second part, <laughs> Crichton. <laughs> not even gonna try the second part. Just dig. Wait. We need to just soak it in. Listen to the music. I mean, come on. Oh, you got the Lemmings Amiga bundle. Excellent. Yeah, Lemmings was an instant classic and continues to be this day. It's nice. Agreed. Let's dig. Happy birthday, Lemmings. Happy Amiga Love Day. Happy 30th birthday, Lemmings. Crichton, thank you so much for the resub, Crichton. The, for the sub, I appreciate that. Crichton, thank you very much. Crichton, you are gonna love being a sub because you're gonna get that Amiga Bill goodie bag. 
and I, I load it up. I load it up with good stuff, and I try and make it worth your while. You know, I really appreciate the subscriptions, and I want to make it worth everyone's while. So thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate it. Done. <laughs> Write down the code, right? <laughs> I think I'm going to be able to get past level two. Oh, in a pro arcade, I appreciate you. So here we go. We have to uh, do some umbrellas. So the, the idea of the game is the lemmings just walk on their own, and you have to get them safely to the exit. And as as the levels you know go on, it depends. Like you have to rescue a certain percentage of them. And at the bottom of the screen, you have all these different attributes you can you can apply to different lemmings. So right now, I'm making them parachuters. I sent some some bad emulation in the sound there. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. In a pro arcade says the goodie bag's worth the sub alone. Then you also get this stream, which is that right? Fantastic. Oh, thank you, in a pro arcade. Thank you. I went to look at VHS cam for the time and I realized I got a Mega Cam on. <laughs> 510. Okay, level three, tailor made for blockers. So we gotta throw some blocks. Is it in a pro arcade? It's a good question. Where are they going? FTV? I, I tell you, I try and make the shows entertaining, you know? Like, I appreciate y'all coming here and spending time watching my streams, so I, I want it to be valuable. So that's why I like to mix it up with the gameplay, the interviews, all that good stuff. I'm gonna play the anti lemon demo. Anti lemon demo. <laughs> I'm gonna play it again. You played a lot of lemmings, Edvin. Nice. Yo, Retro Black Panda. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. If you're new to my streams, welcome. I'm Bill. I stream Amiga stuff here every Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Well, depending on the time of year, it would be 7 p.m. this time of year, UTC and 8 p.m. Central European time. So I'm in New York. So it's 2 p.m. New York time. Um, and I, you know, I do a mix of stuff. I play classic games, new games, I do Amiga News, and I love having guests on. Today we had two amazing guests from Amiga Addict Magazine. Brand new, dude. Look at this. See? Issue number two of Amiga, of Amiga Addict Magazine has got a whole article about DMA design. And look at, look at them lemons, look at them lemons on the cover. <laughs> look at them lemons on the cover. Amiga Addict, dude. We're all Amiga. <laughs> Yo. I'm an Amiga addict and I ain't going to rehab. No, 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 no. <laughs> when using emulation, I'm never, I'm never able to forget. It's not. When I'm using emulation, I've never been able to forget that it's emulation. It's just made me start buying the real thing again. Uh, Mo Boost, yeah, man, I I get it. This to me, this is the closest I've come with the emulation to feeling like it's a real Amiga, because I'm sitting at like a real Amiga 1200 case. So like right now, it feels it feels real to me. As soon as I hit the help key, as soon as I do that, it, it's not an Amiga anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm? You know, I mean, you know what I mean? It's emulation. But this is the closest that's come for me, to be honest. But it um, of course, it doesn't feel like a real Amiga. Now, if I really wanted to feel like a real Amiga. I'd be playing this on my Amiga 500 and and 2002 monitor, CRT monitor, you know. To me, the, the I'm playing on an LCD screen right now, and that's already like halfway to emulation. Um, some levels are brutal. And I, I never managed to finish it either, FX Go Go. Um, so, but emulation is great. You know, like, you can build, you know, you don't, like, this case and this keyboard are, are expensive, but, you know, you can get a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 4 and build an emulated Amiga super cheap. You know, like, you can get... Like, I love this thing right here. Like, check this out. How cool is this little? This is my Raspberry Pi 3. And I got this cool 3D printed case for it. And it doesn't feel like a real Amiga, but it, it definitely has, it's got, some, it's got some Amiga vibes in it, you know what I'm saying? And the cool thing about emulation, as it, it, I think it gets people into Amiga who weren't into Amiga before. You know, like if I can buy a $35 Raspberry Pi and have somewhat of an Amiga experience, that's pretty rad. Because uh, the real hardware is getting it's, it's so expensive, you know? Let's go. It's always Christmas for me with that me Yo, hold on. Yo, Jiro, pause. Where's my remote control? I gotta, I gotta change it to red, you know? Huh. Um... 
Amiga Love. Today is Amiga Love Day. The Pi 400 is a really good route. You don't even need a Pi 400. Um, like a, a Raspberry Pi 3 will emulate, or 3B will emulate most of it. I just went to the 4 because I, you know, I would like to push it with those AGA demos. Um, how do I unpause it? There we go. Even, so like even a Pi 3 will be good, but the, the Pi 4 is freaking awesome. And you know, like, WinUAE is, is amazing. It's probably the most accurate Amiga emulation I've ever done. Well, the Mister maybe. But I'll just call it WinUAE for now because that's I've had the most you know experience with WinUAE. But the thing is, when you're still using like your real PC, it doesn't. It does. It. it, it I like having it separate than my real PC. Even if it's a Raspberry Pi, you're using a modern keyboard, it still feels better. You know what I mean? But putting the Pi inside the case, now putting a Mister inside the case would be amazing too. I, I love the Mister. The Mister FPGA emulation is phenomenal. The only thing with the Mister is, you know, I can't, I can't get 060 speeds with it. So for like Amiga 500, the Mister, the Mister is unbelievable. And 1200, 4000, it's amazing. The Pi 400 with, oh, the, you mean the, um, it's called the Raspberry Pi 400. The Raspberry Pi 400 is a great choice. A great choice. Absolutely. Crichton, I have tried a vampire. It's, I mean, I, I a lot of my friends in WOG have one, and there's a member of Apollo team in Westchester Amiga user group, the, the group uh, that we have here in New York. And, uh, yeah, vampire is awesome. I, I dig it. That That is actually a good way to do it, too. Like, not a standalone vampire. I mean, a standalone vampire, too, but a vampire like inside a real Amiga, even though it's just kind of like you know using the Amiga I.O., it's still, it'll make you feel like you're using a real Amiga. Yeah, I, I definitely um, love the Vampire. Oh, and, and the Ami kit is coming out with the Pi 400 distro shortly, yeah. I hope it works with the Pi 4. Amiga kit is really cool. You just bought a Vampire 4 standalone? Oh, congrats. The Vampire is awesome, I love it. Oram, okay, Oram, I need help, Oram. Um, there, there are WOG t-shirts, but they're from back in the day. I need to make new WOG t-shirts. I want to make swag. I need to make Amiga Bill swag. Hold on, we got to do here. I want to make Amiga Bill swag, and I want to make WOG swag. All right, so, um, so Oram, can you just keep reminding me. I'll do that. I need to put it on the to-do list. I also want to make a WOG cup. Um, this, this cup that um, was gifted to me by Carlos inspired me. I want to make a walk mug. I'm going to I want to make some mouse ma uh, mouse mats of my photography as well. I got a lot of swag I want to make. It's the thing that's weird is like I don't know. Like I don't I guess people I don't want it to really be about me, you know what I mean? Like I'd rather make a Westchester Amiga user group mug than like an Amiga Bill mug, but maybe I'll make one. We'll see. We'll see what the people want. Now I'm trying to remember the best way, the most efficient way to dig. Do I dig through the bottom here, or do I dig? I think this requires less digging. Oh, I don't have any blockers though. What happens if I go there? I I should have scouted that out. Missed. Are they gonna die? Oh no, they're just gonna come back. I, but I don't have a blocker. Oh man, it's gonna take a long time for them to go back and forth. A cup of tea! Thank you so much for the follow, a cup of tea. A pleasure to have you, a cup of tea. Happy Valentine's Day, happy Amiga Love Day. <laughs> Check out the Mr. A600 build. Ooh, dude, I love the Mr. I'm a big Mr. fan. I, uh. I got a Mr. here. And the, the Mr., to be honest with you, the Mr. feels a little bit better than the Pi. You know, like when you're doing the actual emulation. The Mister feels feels a little better to me, and I, I just love how easy it is to like emulate uh, arcade machines and NES and all the other Commodore 64 and Atari 8-bit. I love that. Uh, so I'm a big Mister fan. It feels a little better to me, but having the Pi in this case feels amazing to me. <laughs> Use a donor 600. Oh, oh, John McDermott, you're using a Terrible Fire 1260 instead of the Vine Pirate. That's a great choice too. The Terrible Fire 1260 is amazing. You're lucky, dude. You're lucky. I know um, Rob Cranley had one. Are you an Amiga Ireland too, John McDermott? What time we got here, folks? 
518. I'll do one more round of lemmings and I'll call it a stream. Because this Valentine's Day is going real well. <laughs> but if I go into overtime on the stream, this day is going to take a turn for the worst. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, Amiga Scotland. Oh, got you. Oh, ter so Terrible Fire is in uh, Amiga Scotland, not Amiga Ireland. Got it. Oh, you're Jones for a Mystics? Oh, yeah. Greg of Florida, you're, uh, you're still here. Great. Yeah, wifey does need it. I need to go help her break down the chocolate. Hopefully, there's not a lot to... Um, Rob's pal, Stephen Leary. Nice. Um, hopefully, there's not... Hopefully, she sold all the chocolate and there's not a lot to carry, you know? You were going to towerize your 1200 with the, ter with the Terrible Fire 1260, but it got axed. Yeah. FX Gogo, -Go, you're going to go render some Vista Pro landscapes? Oh, dude, I need to bust out Vista Pro. Vista Pro is one of my favorites. Take care, FX Gogo. -Go. Thank you for hanging out, man. I, I really appreciate it. Oh, that would be sick, Mo Beast. Yo, Mixels Lab, thank you so much for converting your Prime sub to a Tier 1 sub. And um, Bastanaki83, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Mixels, dude, you're doing amazing things, by the way, dude. Oh, we're gonna have to sacrifice the lemming here. We gotta blow him up. You're doing, uh, you're doing amazing things uh, with your game. It looks so good. And you're also using the scorpion engine, if I'm not mistaken. I can't, Mixels. When you, when you're, when you're ready, I need you to come on the stream. If, oh crap. If you, if you want to, I gotta time this out. So how far did he get? He got to there. So I need to get one of these guys. Time it out. So let's, let's get this guy. I could have also used a blocker, but I just timed it out. Your game is looking amazing, Mixels Lab. I love, I love it. It looks so good. Yeah, you always, you uh, in a pro, you always make sure emulators work well with the games you work on as well. You feel it's important. And I know a lot of folks, like even Iraq, he uses an emulator for his CD32 games. He doesn't have a real CD32. So there's, I mean, there's so many great things about emulation. Of course, there ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. But emulation is an amazing tool. As as long as you're use, as long as you're doing Amiga stuff, it doesn't matter whether or what you're doing. You know, it doesn't matter if you're emulating using real Amigas, watching your friend play Amiga. It doesn't matter. As long as you have got some Amiga in your blood, that's all that matters. C64 man, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. C64 man, I do some Commodore 64 stuff here. Mainly Amiga, but I do some Commodore 64 stuff too. I, I love the 64. It's amazing. So thank you for joining the stream. I do I have a let's see. Do I have a 64 template? Uh, yeah. Sometimes sometimes I use my Commodore 64. You know, when I switch over to Commodore 8-bit mode there. <laughs> oh man, it's fun. I love the 64 too. I'm gonna reboot. I'm gonna play some music. We're gonna we'll watch the anti lemmings demo and we'll uh, we'll call the stream. Suck your blood is red and white squares. A nice one, dude. I appreciate it. Actually, while this is rebooting, I'll play the anti lemmings demo for you right now. Anti lemon by Eric Schwartz. Here we go. In honor of Lemmings' thirtieth birthday. Come on, lads. There's the signal. Let's go. <laughs> Idiots! They'll never make it past this level! 
The anti lemon demo! I've loved lo watching Eric Schwartz demos at Wog Meetings back in the day. Thanks everyone for hanging out. It's been an awesome stream. Huge thanks to Ravi Abbott and Pixels at Dawn Gaming for coming on the stream today. Uh, I had a blast talking to y'all. Iraq, I'm sorry. So Iraq does test his games on a real Commodore, on a real CD32. Sorry I misspoke there, Iraq. Sorry about that. Listen, folks, I'll be back next Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, for some hardcore gaming. <laughs> I want to push this baby to the max, man. I want some Alien Breed 3D. I want, I want some, well, so I want some Breathless, you know? I want to do some, some first-person FPS games I couldn't play on my real Amiga back in the day. Thank you all. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Um, you're, thank you, Pixels. We're going to, I'm going to roll some credits. I'm going to raid somebody. I would love to raid. I would love to raid Al Anonymous because he's playing Amiga games. But there's someone I've never raided before, and she's a big supporter of my stream. And I want to give her a little bump. She's playing Commodore 64, so it's appropriate. Her name is Julie Jones, and she comes into my streams a lot. So we're gonna raid her, uh, show her some Amiga love, uh, even though she's doing Commodore 64. We all love Commodore 64. She's playing BC's Quest for Tires right now. Um, so I, I would like to. I'd like to raid her. I've never raided her before, and so I would like to raid someone I've never raided before. So. Spread a, spread a little Amiga love on Valentine's Day, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, I also highly recommend you you uh, you follow Owl Anonymous. He's a huge supporter of my streams, and he's a Mr. Expert. Maybe we'll raid him next week. Um, so, yeah, definitely check out Owl Anonymous, and we're going to raid Jolie, uh, Jolie. The Jolie Jones. Edvin Helens. Thrown down that Amiga love. Com. Thanks everyone for hanging out. It's been a pleasure. I'll find some. I'll find some RTG titles for you, Milo. Like I said, whatever the VIPs want, the VIPs get. Zoo, Zoo Clan 2, Thank you so much for the follow. And thank you for hanging out today, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. We're gonna take it to the hot tub. I'll see you all next Sunday. Wishing you all a great week. Happy birthday, Lemmings, and Amiga forever. Oh, don't forget, new Guru Meditation video coming out this week. Exclamation mark Guru in the chat. Probably coming out on Wednesday. Peace out. Just for the